a very good afternoon to all of you. I welcome you all to this webinar series of Kanpur Chartered Accountant Society, where we are very frequently organizing webinars on topics of common interest. We just had an overwhelming response for our bank audit webinar and then the income tax webinar, which had the recent amendments in Finance Act 2020. Today, we are going on to the topic moving ahead and going on to a very new topic, engagement standards. And uh, to uh, join us in this webinar, we have the president of uh, Kanpur Chartered Accountant Society, Gyan Gupta ji. Uh, we up, have man. with us uh, for chairing the session, our session chairman, our very own C. Akshay Gupta ji. And uh, as a panelist, we have uh, amongst us uh, Anil Bhai uh, will be also putting his views in between. And uh, of course, we have the very learned speaker from Ahmedabad, uh, C. Aniket Talati ji. Well, Aniket Talati is a council member, a newly elected council member. Well, now it's not newly, newly is gone away. It's been more than a year. And we are together in the council. And uh, well, I really welcome you, Aniket. And uh, he's doing wonders. And I think. Uh, this topic uh, has generated a lot of interest. Uh, people want to know what they can sign, how they can sign, and all those things. So, without uh, taking much time, I straight away go to the president of Kanpur Chartered Accountant Society, Jan Gupta ji. Thank you, Manubhaya. I welcome uh, Akshavaya as a chairman, uh, Aniket uh, Talati ji, Anil Kumar Saxena, and viewers who are uh, already logged on uh, to this seminar. And today's uh, topic is uh, engagement standards and uh, we will uh, lot of questions regarding whether we can sign uh, projections uh, udi and etc will be taken care of uh, by uh, mr tarati and over to to manu uh, now over to akshay bhai uh, thank you manu uh, my hearty welcome to aniket uh, a third generation central council member. I, I, to, to my mind, this is the rarest. His father was the president of the institute, Mr. Sunil Talati, and then his grandfather, Mr. H. M. Talati, if I correctly remember, uh, yes, Niket, correct me, correct me, uh, was also a central council member. So uh, a legacy of uh, leadership uh, uh, is already there with Niket. And uh, I saw say with all uh, humility that his family has contributed, I should say, to a very great extent, even since the formation of the Institute. Uh, to, uh, the today, a very, very important topic of our day to day, which is applicable and which is absolutely necessary for our day to day practice. Over the years, many times in the group meetings of society, and in various on various forums we have discussed that we should have in-depth workshops on the engagement standards or we uh, call them the uh, auditing standards or standard and auditing uh, but somehow this could not be managed this could not be arranged and especially the manu uh, he talked to uh, aniket who has given many lectures uh, on this topic and today, as I discussed with Aniket just a few minutes back, that he will be deliberating with an idea of implementing or using or exercising these standards in our day-to-day -day, day -day audit practice. And with very special reference to the SMEs and the SMPs. Uh, friends, you know, there are now number of auditing standards. It may not be possible for all of us to go through them, remember them or to apply them in our day to day practice, uh, which relates to especially SMEs because uh, of the complexity of the first of all, the language of the standards. Number two, uh, mode and manner of uh, the practicality of implementing those standards and thirdly of course uh, the time frame the infrastructure 
which is normally available to SMPs to conduct the audits and the size of the auditing. These are very, very important factors. And within the standard itself, I believe Anket must have listed out, Anket must have found out, which we, we will hear from them, that how to implement these standards in the best possible manner that so that there is a fair compliance of these standards and the quality of the audit is maintained to the uh, expectation of the regulators and the expectation of the uh, users of the financial statements. And especially uh, uh, Manu told me and Aniket also told me that he will be also covering many uh, questions which are there in the minds of the, uh, the, the uh, practitioners, especially, uh, for example, related to the certification of the projections which the practitioners are asked by the bankers or the clients to certify, then there is an engagement standard with relating to that also. And Anket will be covering that also. And with this, I invite Anket for his presentation on this important aspects of the our audit practice. Please, Aniket. Uh, before Aniket takes up just one small information, I would like to share with you that currently Aniket is the chairman of the FRRB, the financial uh, review board, uh, he's heading that. And uh, secondly, he's also heading the digital e-learning and re-engineering group, which basically is looking after the digital platform of the Institute. And I'm pleased to announce today that with the help of Aniket, uh, the committee which I had digital accounting and assurance board, we have just launched the first batch of FAFD, forensic accounting and fraud detection online batch, the first batch of 90 students and uh, this is the first of its kind uh, any member who's interested could log on to the digital learning hub register for that course we have a limited seats 90 seats only so it's on a first come first serve basis uh, i think we launched it just half an hour back and already uh, before, uh, as soon as the mails have started uh, going we have already got four or five registrations so anybody who's willing the courses from 10 o'clock in the morning to 2.15 in the afternoon for 11 days. Instead of seven days, it used to take place physically. Six hours every day, the number of hours is not reduced. But the fees from 20,000 has gone down to 7,000. And uh, we hope that uh, you can utilize this um, opportunity while uh, remaining lockdown. You can still uh, join that course. So thanks to Aniket for this wonderful initiative uh, which we've taken and now straight away anil why would you like to say something okay so he'll chip in in between uh, so over to aniket uh, thank you so much most respected our central council member somebody who's a stalwart in this profession i personally look up to uh, my father is uh, calling him a friend for so many years and i'm it's a matter of privilege for me to be addressing this session in your presence, Akshayji. Thank you very much, sir. Manuji, uh, office bearers of KCS, Anilji, and all other participants. Uh, very good afternoon and a hearty welcome to you in this, uh, if I can say, one of the most, at least perceived, boring topics that a, a speaker can take. I have been fortunate enough to come to the central region and take certain topics. Uh, Manuji, can we mute uh, others? I am getting some uh, voice in the background. If you can just mute some other. Okay, okay, just a second. Yes, yes, Manuji, done, done. I think it's it's far better. Um, so uh, thank you once again. Uh, and like I said, it is one of the topics that we generally consider to be dry. Uh, but to my utter surprise, uh, Manuji has said that there is a good response within the central region wherever this message has gone. In fact, I have received. Uh, the circular that was shared in the central region by some of the members. So I'm assuming we will have certain participants. If not, if this video will, I'm sure, uh, due to Manuji, will be available on the YouTube channel and people can go back and refer to it uh, in their time. I would first of all like to uh, acknowledge and thank my respected senior colleague in the council, Manuji. I have been his deputy last year in a lot of committees, had the privilege of working with him on a lot of game-changing projects. And believe me, friends, it is today when we are all in a situation of lockdown, when the institute officers are not working, when so many other things are not functional, our offices are closed, 
yet the institute is able to work with 100% almost efficiency and the biggest credit of that goes to manuji and the project of ssp i had the privilege of being a small part of it in whatever way i could contribute but it was led and implemented by manuji and let me just give you some perspective on that before we start this session because sometimes you know within your region people may not be aware of these things we have 1 lakh students who will be registering for the foundation course in april and may imagine the situation last year if we did not have ssp these students would have to go to the branch or to the kanpur regional office and get themselves registered submit all the papers in this lockdown friends it is practically not possible and therefore so many young budding persons who have the dream to become a chartered accountant would have to forego the dream because they would not be able to do so similarly so, so many firms of ours are getting to be constituted our fees are getting paid so many other activities in the form of uden is taking place at the institute and this is all possible friends because of the technology that has been in place and i thank with my sincerest uh, you know thanks to manuji for making sure this happens and leading the way sir it has been a pleasure and privilege to work with you let me now uh, friends just take you about a little brief on this topic and why we have chosen to address you on this if you would have seen only yesterday the double asb which is the auditing and assurance standard board of the institute of chartered accountants of india has come out with a circular it's a very important notification where we have said that chartered accountants who are in practice if they want to issue any reports or certificates can do so with the help of digital signatures now this is a huge advantage and change that has been facilitated by the council and i'm grateful to the double asb specifically for acceding to our request uh, if you look at the construct of the act especially the it act and the indian evidence act both provide for the recognition formally of the digital signature it very clearly in section 3 and 4 lays out where the uh, certificate can be used applied affixed and where it cannot be it is categorical to mention that for example if a sale deed is to be executed that means a property sale is happening or there is certain transaction which requires notarized documents those are out of the purview of the it act and therefore out of the dsc but for certain assurance engagements for example the tax audit reports for a few years now we have been signing with our digital signatures now the double asb has gone ahead and said that you can use your digital signature what does this mean you and me are sitting at our home we do not have access to our letter heads we do not have access to our stamp pads we also are not able to print because all of us may not have printer facility at our home but yet there are certain clients who have urgent requirement of certain attestations they have certain urgent repatriations or certain transfer of funds that have to happen to foreign countries and those require a certificate of a chartered accountant to facilitate this work we have worked with the government and then come out with this circular where we have categorically allowed members to use and append and affix their dsc it's a very simple process i am sure manu ji or somebody else can take a short video on that and uh, educate all of you about using this but the point i'm trying to drive home your friends is that now the times have changed the government is responding at a extremely fast pace as you can be seen in this example even for all other changes that are happening the government is extremely proactive and it is therefore incumbent upon us as chartered accountants that when the government is so active where the perception of the public of society and government from us as auditors not just auditing financial statements but also issuing certificates is so huge that the expectation is cast upon us it is important for us to also understand that we follow some standards because these standards akshay ji very rightly mentioned that we consider mera chota practice hai main choti firm se hu ya meri ek proprietary firm hai to main kahan ye kitab lunga main isko padunga kahan apply karunga ki shayad client ki fee bhi itni nahi hoti hai ki hum standard ko follow kare hum hamari purani jo bhi सिस्टम सेट है उसके हिसाब से ऑडिट करते हैं या सर्टिफिकेट इशू कर देते हैं बट बिलीव मी फ्रेंड्स दीज एंगेजमेंट स्टैंडर्ड्स इफ यू कंसीडर देम टू बी अ वेट ऑन यू और इट इज अ कंप्लायंस बर्डन देन ऑफ कोर्स आपको ये बर्डन लगेगा बट मनु जी डिसिप्लिनरी कमेटी में रहे हैं मैं आपको इतना ही बताता हूँ इंस्टीट्यूट की वेबसाइट पर अगर आप जाएंगे आई सी आई डॉट ओ आर जी डिसिप्लिनरी कमेटी में ऑल ऑर्डर ऑफ द लास्ट फोर ईयर्स ऑफ द डिसिप्लिनरी कमेटी वेरियस बेंचेज आर अपलोडेड ऑनलाइन the the cause list is there and all orders have been uploaded if you can go and find any person and manu ji can weigh on this and i'm sure uh, you will agree with this all of you that wherever a member has been found to be not guilty or he has been able to prove that i did my work with 100% diligence 
I was not negligent and therefore gross negligence cannot apply. He has resorted to these standards and said that within the framework of the institute's assurance standards, that is the auditing standards, the essays, or any other standard as may be applicable to certificates, I have done all that was required to be done out of a chartered accountant in practice, out of an auditor, and the documentation and other aspects reveal this. What I'm trying to tell you, friends, is that ye engagement standards ko na hum compliance burden deke, but we must look at it as a suraksha kavach or as a protection that will provide us for any litigation that may happen in future for our work. And therefore, friends, in this time, Manuji mentioned I'm the chairman of the FRRB. In FRRB, we have decided that instead of 100 cases, we are from this year going to review 250 cases, which would mean that in a period of three to five years, depending on the size, some companies will be picked every three years, some every four and some every five years. All large listed companies of the country will be picked up by FRRB for review. This is happening because we have strong government representation within uh, the institute and within the committee. I can share with you this year, IBBI has sent us a list of companies which have been liquidated and we have now been required that in companies jo in NCLT mein liquidation mein gai hai, inke audit accounts aap check kariye, isme compliance check kariye aur bataiye kya ho raha hai. And please understand, if you look at the audit quality report that the NFRA has recently issued in one case, these reviews are no longer restricted only to the standards of accounting, that is the accounting standard of the Indians. They are going deeper. They are verifying the Section 144 of the Companies Act. They are verifying all the compliance of standard auditing, the documentation standards, more importantly, the engagement and the independent standards that are laid out in SA 200. What I'm trying to drive home, friends, is the scenario has changed. We have done a lot of work with the whole world. The client was coming to the tally up. हम हमारे हिसाब से ऑडिट कर लेते थे टिक मार देते थे और सोचते थे चलो ये ऑडिट रिपोर्ट दे देते हैं या सर्टिफिकेट देते हैं बट नाउ इन दिस चेंज सिनेरियोस पेन बिलीव मी इट इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट आई विल गिव यू वन अदर एग्जांपल टू स्ट्रेस अपॉन दिस पॉइंट बिफोर वी कैन मूव ऑन टू द एंगेजमेंट स्टैंडर्ड्स प्रॉपर द पीयर रिव्यू इज टेकिंग अ ह्यूज चेंज द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ पीयर रिव्यू इज आल्सो गेटिंग चेंज अ न्यू कांसेप्ट ऑफ स्पेशल पीयर रिव्यू इज बीइंग इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय द पीयर रिव्यू बोर्ड and now that we have the urine statistics, which very clearly laid out what kind of work members have done, the peer review board will now be ordering some special peer reviews for certain specific cases. And friends, this is not your institute acting upon our members. The government and all other agencies, including banks, are forcing us and acting, making sure that we have a regular compliance mechanism. There must be a live monitoring mechanism. And it is because of that, that these things are happening. Therefore, I think it's very critical for us to understand these engagement standards. I will now take you through this presentation that I have tried to prepare. Very important for us to understand the authority attached to documents issued by the Institute. Friends, as you are aware, a lot of times you will be seeing on the Institute website or the different books that you are using, there are guidance notes and then there are statements. Besides the accounting standards and the auditing standards, that are issued by the institute. What is the authority that they have? It, here I would like to very categorically emphasize the statements that are issued. They are issued to ensure that there is compliance of the members in a certain matters. And therefore, they come with the full weight of the council. They are absolutely mandatory. Or if we are chartered accountant, hai, we may be a chartered accountant in practice or we may be a chartered accountant not holding COP. These statements are mandatory. Friends, if you look at the new code of ethics also, which is coming into play and will be effective on 1st of July 2020, there the code of ethics has been widened and very important that certain clauses have now also been made applicable for members in industry. We have members in industry, members in profession, these professional practice, they are termed differently in the code of ethics due to international normal nature. But the CFO is signing, now it's the responsibility of the CFO. And therefore, please appreciate that statements which are issued by the council, they are with the full weight of the council and are mandatory. On the other hand, guidance notes are in the form of guidance. Aap sabne guidance note on tax audit ke baare mein to suna hi hoga. We all use it. The other common guidance note that we all use is the guidance note on bank branch audit. Ah, of course, jis saal milti hai bank branch audit, cooling mein hai to hum us saal ki bank branch audit ki kitab shayad nahi kharitte hai, dekhte hai. But yes, it is a very important publication and most, one of the most viewed and downloaded publications that the institute comes out with. Now, the guidance notes are primarily designed to provide guidance to members on certain matters that arise in their professional work. 
on which they can refer to while resolving the difficulty they are not mandatory in nature they are recommendatory meaning that aapko isko agar follow karna hai aap kariye agar aap nahi karte hain very important then you must have a strong basis for it for example there is certain standard on auditing and certain accounting standard which exists and your interpretation of this standard leads you to a conclusion ke guidance note hai oil and gas ke liye aur usme ek method of depletion diya hua hai you are of the opinion your opinion that no this depletion method does not suffice and i will follow the nds form where there is a separate mechanism given if you have a specific basis and you can prove your case only then deviate from a guidance note or else please always ensure that you follow guidance note also but important for us to understand the authority attached to it and therefore i always try and ask this question whenever i'm taking a topic either on accounting standard or on auditing standard aapne institute ki kitabe dekhi hongi there is certain books which are red in color certain which are pink certain which are dark green light green and different colors any one of you who is aware why does the institute come out with these books in different colors kya subah chairman ya committee secretary ko man mein ichcha hoti hai chalo pink mera favorite color hai to pink kitab banaye kisi ko lal pasand hai to lal color banaye ya iske piche koi logic hai friends let me share with you that these all have a very standard international practice at the institute ye jo aapko pink kitab beech mein dikh rahi hai that is the compendium of standards of internal audit there are three compendiums that are published by the institute this is on internal audit the internal audit standards as of today are not mandatory they are recommendatory in nature there is the accounting standards that is the compendium of standard accounting standards and indias that friends is of course as you are aware because notified under the companies act mandatory then there are the compendium of accounting standards which are not for indias those are also mandatory for chartered accountants and then there is the compendium for standards and auditing so these which are the standards come out in pink jo dark green aapko dikh raha hai wo guidance note on bank branch audit hai hamari sari guidance note us color ki hoti hai besides this there are different technical guides education material background material which is published so let me share with you these publications of the institute are always coming out with the committee they are not with the authority of the council they are only recommendatory in nature agar aap inko khol ke padhenge to usme bahut clearly likha gaya hai ke ye committee ka view hai this is not the view of the institute or the council and therefore those are not mandatory they are given to you as a reference material therefore i thought it will be appropriate to take you through these uh, different colors of our publications to make you understand that each of them carry a different weight now since we are talking of assurance engagements it's important for us to understand what assurance actually means because assurance attestation audit hum in sab ko kafi baar use to kar lete hain but they all have different connotations and therefore it is important for us to understand what is an assurance so that when you apply a framework of standards which we will go to in the next slides you are very clear ke main assurance service de raha hu ya main koi aur service de raha hu jisme assurance ya koi form of uh, attestation involved nahi hai so what is an assurance engagement an assurance engagement means an engagement which a practitioner yani a chartered accountant because this is coming from our international definition our standards are aligned with the standards issued by iwsp that is the international auditing standards board and therefore the terminology is used practitioner because it is work on there it says assurance engagement means an engagement which a practitioner expresses a conclusion designed to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended user other than the responsible party very important line other than the responsible party about the outcome of evaluation इसका मतलब क्या हुआ अगर मैं कोई सर्टिफिकेट बना के ज्ञान गुप्ता जी को दे रहा हूँ वो मेरे क्लाइंट है उन्होंने मेरे को बोला मुझे मेरा नेटवर्क सर्टिफिकेट दीजिए निकल दी और उनको इंटरनल कंपनी पर्पस के लिए चाहिए दैट डजेंट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट अश्योरेंस फंक्शन पर अगर ज्ञान गुप्ता जी मुझे आते हैं अक्षय जी के पास आते हैं और बोलते हैं सर मुझे एक नेटवर्क सर्टिफिकेट चाहिए जो मुझे यूएस वीजा के लिए लेके जाना है मेरे साथ सो देर द इंटेंडेड यूजर इज नॉट द रिसिपियंट बट अ थर्ड पार्टी एंड देर फोर इट बिकम्स एन अश्योरेंस एंगेजमेंट why this is important is when we look at the tree of standards you will have to determine before entering ki aap jo service de rahe hain wo assurance mein categorize ho rahi hai to aapko wo standards apply karne hain warna there is a other related services srs jisko hum bolte hain those standard will be applicable so friends i think i discussed this uh in terms of the understanding just some examples that i want to give you engagements which are covered by srs jo maine aapko bolta hai standards for related services 
जैसे अग्रीड अपॉन प्रोसीजर्स दीज आर नॉट कैटेगराइज अश्योरेंस स्टैंडर्ड वॉट आर अग्रीड अपॉन प्रोसीजर्स इसको एयूपी बोलते हैं आप और मैं मैं आपको 100 परसेंट गारंटी से कह रहा हूँ आपके पास साल में दो या चार क्लाइंट ऐसे आते हैं जिनका नेचर ऑफ वर्क इज एन अग्रीड अपॉन प्रोसीजर्स बट बिकॉज हमें नॉलेज ही नहीं है वॉट अग्रीड अपॉन प्रोसीजर्स मीन एंड वॉट दे कॉन्स्ट्रू हम काफी बार क्या करते हैं हमारा खुद का बढ़िया सर्टिफिकेट का फॉर्मेट बनाते हैं हम लिखते हैं टू होम सो एवर इट मे कंसर्न लुकिंग टू द बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट बेस्ड ऑन द वेरिफिकेशन ऑफ स्टॉक रिकॉर्ड इन्वेंट्री एंड लुकिंग टू द एक्सप्लेनेशन प्रोवाइडेड बाई द मैनेजमेंट वी योर बाई सर्टिफाई दैट सर्टिफाई करके दे देते हैं एक्चुअली वो सर्टिफिकेट की सर्टिफिकेशन की जरूरत ही नहीं इट इज एन अग्रीड अपॉन प्रोसीजर वी विल गो टू दैट स्टैंडर्ड एंड आई एक्सप्लेन वेन यू कैन यूज इट अदर सर्विस वीव जस्ट लिस्टेड डाउन टैक्स एडवाइजरी सर्विसेज टैक्स रिटर्न मैनेजमेंट कंसल्टिंग ये सब अश्योरेंस नहीं देते हैं दीज ऑल आर आउटसाइड दी एम बिट इवन यू लुक एट द रिवाइज कोड ऑफ एथिक्स फ्रेंड्स यू विल लुक एट द इंस्टीट्यूट हैज कम आउट विद डेफिनेशन ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सर्विस और उसमें हमने कहा है कि अगर किसी क्लाइंट का टैक्स रिटर्न आप भरते हैं सो so, ऑडिट हो गया मैं रिटर्न फाइलिंग इज अर एक्सरसाइज ऑफ एक्सट्रापोलिंग सर्टन डेटा पुटिंग इट इज फॉर्मेट रिक्वायर्ड बाय द गवर्नमेंट एंड फाइलिंग इट वी आर नॉट प्रोवाइडिंग एनी अश्योरेंस ये बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि सेक्शन वन जो कंपनीज एक्ट का है वो बोलता है चार्ट अकाउंटेंट हु ऑडिटर ऑफ अ कंपनी शेल नॉट प्रोवाइड द फॉलोइंग नॉन अश्योरेंस सर्विसेज तो हमें समझ लेना है कि इसे इंस्टीट्यूट ने भी नॉन अश्योरेंस सर्विस आज की तारीख में कैटेगराइज किया है इसीलिए अगर हम ऑडिट कर रहे हैं और उसी क्लाइंट का टैक्स रिटर्न फाइल कर रहे हैं एज ऑफ टुडे इट इज नॉट कंसीडर्ड टू बी अ वायलेशन ऑफ सेक्शन 144। बट रिमेंबर 144 इन द ए टू ई हैज द एंड अ वेरी क्लियर लाइन विच सेज एनी अदर सर्विस एज मे बी नोटिफाइड बाई देंट्रल गवर्नमेंट यू आर ऑल सींग इन द न्यूज पेपर द गवर्नमेंट इज कंसिडरिंग नोटिफाइंग सर्टन सर्विस इफ बाई एक्ट दे से टैक्स रिटर्न सर्विस मैनेजमेंट सर्विस हो जाती है वायलेटेड है तो ठीक है वरना आज की तारीख में ये ना अश्योरेंस सर्विस है और ना कोड ऑफ एथिक्स के लिए इट इज कंसिडर टू बी ए वायलेशन ऑफ योर एंगेजमेंट देर फॉर दीज सर्विस वी आर पार्किंग अड बिकॉज इन टूडे सेमिनार वी विल बी ड्यूरिंग ओनली विद अश्योरेंस स्टैंडर्ड सो दीज आर एग्जाम्पल्स विच आर नॉट कवर्ड लेट्स नाउ ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड द ओवर व्यू एंड दर एम्बिट ऑफ अश्योरेंस स्टैंडर्ड ये जो लेफ्ट साइड पे आपकी स्क्रीन के आपको दिख रहा है द एंटायर चार्ट दैट आई ट्राई टू शेयर विथ यू दिस इफ यू आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड रिमेंबर दिस इज दिंग आर्क ऑफ ऑल अश्योरेंस सर्विसेज वी हैव ट्राइड टू पुट दैट इन दिस फॉर्म सो दैट वी कैन ऑल अंडरस्टैंड एंड वंस वी ऑब्जॉर्व दिस आई एम श्योर दैट वाइल अटेस्टिंग एंड डूइंग आर फंक्शन इज अडिटर वेल बी नो चैलेंज फेस बाय अस एंड वी विल बी एबल टू रिफर टू दोप्रिएट स्टैंडर्ड and the appropriate illustration given in these standards before issuing a report or certificate so ye kya hai ab sabse upar padhenge the chartered accountants act the code of ethics and all other pronouncements of the institute ye combined we refer to them as the code they are always referred to in the disciplinary committee also and this form the basis of ethical principles of the ici so this is binding on all chartered accountants iske theek niche hai standard on quality controls as of today the institute has notified only one standard on quality control which is the sqc1 sqc1 the way i refer to it is an umbrella it covers all your services and standards sqc1 mein kahin koi uh, audit procedure ki baat nahi ki gayi hai specific certificate ki ya audit ki baat nahi ki hai sqc1 is an umbrella under which all audit and non audit services are covered and it is applicable to the firm यह बताना जरूरी है फर्म का जो डेफिनेशन इंस्टीट्यूट में है वो पार्टनरशिप नहीं है इवन अ प्रोपराइटरी फर्म आल्सो कॉन्स्टिट्यूट्स ए फर्म सो अ प्रोपराइटरी कंसर्न इज आल्सो अ फर्म अ पार्टनरशिप इज आल्सो अ फर्म एंड द एसक्यूसी इज अप्लाई फॉर्म वाइड वी विल गो थ्रू एसक्यूसी वन विद इन एसक्यूसी देर आर टू बाइफ्रिकेशन दैट आई मेड अश्योरेंस सर्विसेज रिमेंबर अश्योरेंस क्या होता है जहां यूजर के अलावा भी कोई आप पे रिलाय कर रहा है तो अश्योरेंस और सेकेंड पार्ट इज द रिलेटेड सर्विस ये कौन सा हो गया जो मैंने आपको बताया आप सिर्फ क्लाइंट को रिपोर्टिंग इंटरनल पर्पस के लिए दे रहे हैं तो अगर आप सिर्फ क्लाइंट के रिपोर्टिंग पर्पस के लिए दे रहे हैं दो स्टैंडर्ड्स दैट विल बी एप्लीकेबल टू यू आर रेफर्ड टू एस रेफर्ड टू एस एस आर एस स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑन रिलेटेड सर्विसेज रिलेटेड सर्विसेज इट डज नॉट यूज द वर्ड अश्योरेंस इट डज नॉट यूज द वर्ड रिव्यू देयर बिकॉज दीज आर नॉट ए अश्योरेंस फंक्शन नाउ इफ यू गो टू द अश्योरेंस सर्विसेज उसमें अगर आप हिस्टोरिकल इंफॉर्मेशन सर्टिफाई कर रहे हैं हिस्टोरिकल इंफॉर्मेशन क्या हो गया 
आज अगर मैं अप्रैल 15 2020 में बैठा हूं तो दो चीज हो सकती है या तो मैं 19 20 का सर्टिफिकेट दे रहा हूं या 19 20 का ऑडिट कर रहा हूं या मैं लास्ट क्वार्टर का कर रहा हूं इन दोनों में से अगर कोई भी चीज होती है पर अगर इट रिलेट्स टू हिस्टोरिकल एंगेजमेंट्स हिस्टोरिकल फाइनेंशियल डेटा अगर वो एनुअल ऑडिट रिलेटेड है तो हम उसे स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ ऑडिटिंग बकेट में डालेंगे जो सबसे नीचे कॉर्नर में है सो अश्योरेंस उसके अंडर हिस्टोरिकल हिस्टोरिकल में अगर एनुअल है एनुअल टैक्स ऑडिट कंपनीज ऑडिट दैट वी आर डूइंग अंडर द कंपनीज एक्ट उसमें एसएस आर एप्लीकेबल इफ यू आर नॉट डूइंग एन ऑडिट फॉर एग्जांपल क्वार्टरली रिव्यू कर रहे हैं या किसी किसी केसेस में डे टू डे अपने प्रैक्टिस में नहीं होता सो आई विल नॉट कवर इट मच बट इफ यू हैव अ फॉरेन ओनरशिप कंपनी एंड यू आर गिविंग अ रिपोर्ट ओनली फॉर दैट पर्पस देन यू मे डू अ एनुअल रिव्यू आल्सो सो एसआरएस दो हैं बट जो ज्यादा हम यूज करते हैं वो 2100 है व्हिच For listed companies, जिनके पास listed audit है, हम quarterly review जिसे करते हैं, those are done under SREs. So for historical information, annual is SA, and for quarterly and other review, it is SRE. Now we come to assurance engagements other than audits or reviews of historical information. जो अक्षय सर ने मुझे शुरू में एक question पूछा था, और आप सबको बताया था कि today we are going to cover on the projections. काफी बार banks हमसे मांगती है पांच साल का future projection. सीएमआई डेटा जिसे हम कॉमन पार्लांस में यूज करते हैं व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ द ऑडिटर्स इन सर्टिफाइंग दैम दैट गेट्स कवर्ड फ्रेंड्स अंडर द एस ए ईज दैट इज स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑन अश्योरेंस एंगेजमेंट सो ये अश्योरेंस तो है क्योंकि मैं क्लाइंट को नहीं दे रहा हूं क्लाइंट इन टर्न बैंक को भी दे रहा है या किसी थर्ड पार्टी को भी दे रहा है सो इट इज एन अश्योरेंस एंगेजमेंट बट इट डजंट डील विद हिस्टोरिकल इंफॉर्मेशन एंड देयरफॉर दीस स्टैंडर्ड्स आर एस ए ई सो द बॉटम फॉर our critical aspects to understand besides the start which is sqc you start with five major parts sqc which is the overwhelming umbrella uske andar char part hai annual audit sa quarterly review sre projections or non historical data sae or non audit services agar hum kar rahe hain so those will all fall under srs so with this i think it is important that we all understood the overall framework of these standards in application because only when we know which standard to apply can we rightly apply those standards here i have just tried to list the full forms because agar aapko acche se nahi padhai diya ho presentation mein the sqc and then the four standards we have discussed this friends there is a difference between attestation assurance and audit again there is a difference between audit and review which i would like to take you and this is a very important chart i will share the presentation with you this will help you whenever you are doing any engagement to judge what is the level of assurance that you are providing i'll go to the the pyramid structure first which is on the right of your screen that is audit audit is the paramount form of assurance अगर मैंने बोला मैंने ऑडिटेड फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स दिया है इट मींस वी हैव गिवन द हाईएस्ट लेवल ऑफ अश्योरेंस दैट एग्जिस्ट्स एज एन ऑडिटर दैट वी कैन गिव बिलो ऑडिट्स इज समथिंग व्हिच इज कॉल्ड द रिव्यू रिव्यू आपको जैसे मालूम है बीएससी एनएससी को हम क्वार्टरली देते हैं लिमिटेड रिव्यू के फॉर्म में देयर कैन आल्सो बी अ एनुअल रिव्यू बट जनरली यूज्ड फॉर क्वार्टरली पर्पसेस उसके नीचे आता है कंपाइलेशन कंपाइलेशन एंगेजमेंट फ्रेंड्स मींस दैट यू आर ओनली कंपाइलिंग एंड प्रिपेयरिंग फाइनेंशियल डेटा किसी कंपनी ने बोला मुझे शेड्यूल थ्री के हिसाब से आप बैलेंस शीट बना के दीजिए अगर हम सिर्फ वो बना के देते हैं अ कंपाइलेशन रिपोर्ट दैट यू कैन इश्यू इट इज नॉट अ लेवल ऑफ अश्योरेंस एंड यू आर गिविंग इट और उसके नीचे आता है फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट प्रिपरेशन जनरली इन आर कंट्री नॉट वेरी एप्लीकेबल बिकॉज वी हैव अकाउंटेंट्स जो बी कॉम एम या अदर प्रोफेशन में होते हैं वो ये काम करके प्रिपेयर करके लाते हैं देर फोर आई एम नॉट डीलिंग विद दैट बट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट फ्रॉम दिस लाइड one that i mentioned audit provides the highest level of assurance but remember the assurance is always reasonable agar aap pyramid ke niche dekhenge maine likha hai audit gives you reasonable assurance you can never give absolute assurance aapka koi report aisa nahi bolega ki 100% sat pratishat isme maine ye verify kiya hai you will always mention that you have used the standards on audit we use sampling we use other mechanisms and therefore reasonable assurances to be provided please understand the expectation of the government also friends is construed and understood within this framework they don't expect that you give an absolute form of assurance 
I can only borrow the phrase that was used by the MCA secretary in Jethi Srinivas very recently when he was talking about the ILNFS camp. And he said that I do not expect an auditor to find a needle in a haystack. Haystack mein mujhe needle dhunna hai, vaisi meri expectation hai auditor se. But if there is an auditor in the room, the chartered accountant ought to have found. What it means is that if there is something which is glaring, which comes out and you can clearly see it, then you are supposed to report it, but you are not going there to find these smallest errors. So audit provides reasonable assurance. Review, like you see in the pyramid, is a slightly lower level of limited assurance. Second, very important for you to understand, when you audit, karte hai, the audit report always has an opinion. And therefore, there is a positive assurance. What is audit report mein kya likha jata hai? in our opinion? And if you are a in my opinion. When you are review, kar rahe hai, Usme aisa wording, look at the review reports that you are giving. If you have any listed clients, nothing has come to our attention. Mujhe kuch dhyan mein nahi aaya hai. I have performed normal analytical procedures and nothing out of that has come as an extraordinary item, which I must report. So very clear, distinctive features of an audit and review, absolute and moderate in our opinion and nothing has come to our attention. Besides that, there are agreed upon procedures. Main jab is pe le jaunga, we will discuss it in further but something that we can also try and use in our day-to-day -day practice. Now, friends, let me then deal with the overarching umbrella, which I refer to as the uh, mother standard before we understand the standards on auditing or the review standards or the engagement standards. This is the SQC-1. Within the SQC, a key SQC has the institute ne notify kiya, which is SQC-1. This talks about quality control for firms that perform audits and review of historical financial information and other insur assurance related service engagements. Yani all services, that four services that we talked about, SA, SAE, SRS, sub ke liye ye applicable. Hai. I've just given a broad structure of this. What this standard basically deals with is it deals with the introduction and definitions. Definitions I cover kiya right me. Certain important definitions for us to understand of engagement partner. Kabhi bhi aap communication kare client se, hum kafi bar likhte hai, ye responsible hai, responsible partner likhne se, always it is advisable, please refer to yourself as the engagement partner, the engagement quality reviewer, because you are only responsible for that engagement. There is an engagement team which is defined, that is chartered accountants, other professional staff articles which are forming part of your team. The firm, like I mentioned, is defined and this covers not only partnership firms, but also proprietary concerns and other important definitions of network network firms is covered. I, uh, I can share with you friends that the networking guidelines are right now under the review of the Institute. Uh, there is a very strong request from members at large that please make sure that we are able to have larger network firms. We are able to have uh, partnerships in a more structured manner. There is a huge discussion going on in the Institute and we will be coming up with it. So the networks have been defined there. These are the important definitions. What is also critical is the res leadership responsibility of quality within the firm is covered. So therefore, for every engagement, and jin jin logo ne peer review karaya hai apna, ya peer review kiya hai, unhe ye sab clearly malum hoga, kyunke jo hum report bana ke bejte hai, usme ye sare steps bakaida mentioned hai, ki aapne engagement ka quality dekha hai, quality control dekha hai, leadership and independence requirements dekha hai. Very, very critical, the ethical requirements relating to independence because they are not only governed and mentioned in the SQC, but also in the essays we talk about independence. And in today's world, friends, it is very important that we be independent, not just in action, but also how it is perceived. Let me give you a small example. And again, this matter is subject to all the judicial pronouncements that may follow. But as of today, we have on public domain, the NFRA's AQR, which they did for a leading firm, which did the audit of ILNFS. AQR Parenge, which is available online, there they have construed that the independence requirements not only apply to the firm. Any many many chartered accountant firm may say agar koi service di hai, or wo conflict may hai, to hi thik hai bhaiya, par meri agar koi sister concern hai, or wo koi or services di rahi hai, aap usko mat consider kariye. This was the plight that many of us were taking. But if you look at the AQR report, the government's view is that they are interpreting the words directly and indirectly mentioned in section 144 to mean that if in your office premise, in your ownership or related parties' ownership, there is an entity 
which has gone in turn and provided certain services to the client and invoices of those are found then you are considered to be in violation of sqc and sa 200 and they have held you to be guilty bahut zaruri hai samajhna kafi bar hum sister institute se invoicing kar dete hain but when this now will come up for review or will be picked up for scrutiny if the client faces some challenges it may give certain unpleasant notices to us also so please try and appreciate the independence requirements as mentioned in sqc and sa 200 are very wide even 144 inter interprets them in a very wide manner and therefore important for us to understand that uh, this, the sqc then in turn talks about human resources uh, there is the engagement performance part which talks about how you can derive upon an opinion or how you can work out a certain and work on it and finally monitoring. because quality control is not a one time exercise friends the quality control that has been referred to is a ongoing exercise and as a firm it is our responsibility that we monitor quality at all times it must at least be documented and you must be able to prove it your peer review requires this to be displayed of course checklist hai to hum bhar lete hain but advisable that we actually follow this and take it into account the sqc1 friends also has a very important para <coughs> which i would like to draw your attention to and just an image that i have put here meri office nahi hai hum itne acche se shayad files nahi filing kar pate but uh, the retention para 83 of sqc1 this talks about how long should you retain audit files a lot of us have this question seniors who will be there in the profession unko bahut saalon se ye man mein hai ki 10 saal tak hame audit file rakhni hoti hai kyunki purane jo essays the before evolving into these essays we had the sas and the aas they had mentioned the 10 year period for retention of audits this has been changed since the introduction of introduction of the sqc1 and it very specifically states that for engagements the retention period is no shorter than 7 years from the date of auditor's report or if later the date of the group audit report what does it mean today we are sitting on 15th of april if you had a company whose audit 7 years ago that is in 2013 march 13 ka audit humne 15 april 13 ya uske pehle khatam kar liya tha today you can safely do away with this files and you are no longer required to retain them subject to there is no disciplinary or any other proceeding pending against you so that 10 year period has been reduced to 7 years but that 7 years is to be counted from the date of the auditor's report so ab march 13 ki aaj hi mat fenki agar aapne august ya september 13 mein use sign kiya tha you will have to wait till august and september 13 and only then discard those files here again a uh, lot of people ask it sath saal baad kya disciplinary mechanism nahi ho sakta i think manu bhai is the right person to answer it but my understanding is that if you are in a position that you require to demonstrate that your non compliance or gross negligence uh, can be proved and that requires certain documents then yes you have a case but agar prima facie on the basis of records hi malum pad raha hai aapka gross negligence hai and there is no requirement to refer to those documents then still the disciplinary can be constituted so important for us to appreciate those aspects manu ji i think i my battery is just uh, running low i'll uh, i'll just charge it if uh, in okay, the okay um, can... you you charge it i'll just uh, elaborate on the point which you made regarding those uh, uh, seven years well friends uh, in the <coughs> disciplinary committee it is very simple that following this seven year uh, mandate of keeping books of accounts is not uh, the only deciding factor basically if the disciplinary committee feels that there are certain documents which are required to prove your innocence and seven years have passed it may accept the seven year period but if with the material on record or with whatever is available with the disciplinary committee it feels that no document which you uh, may come up with will prove your innocence then it will not basically consider the seven year limitation period and secondly the seven year starts not from the date of hearing but from the date of uh, the first hearing of first notice which was issued so suppose you got a notice 3 years back and uh, uh, the case started later so you cannot say now that the seven years have passed because you were served notice from that very date those seven years are counted 
So basically, Aniket, uh, you're back. So I'm handing it over to you. And uh, you're very correct that, uh, as I just mentioned, that the seven years will depend upon what the disciplinary committee feels, whether there are certain documents which are required to prove your innocence or with the material on record, nothing is required. So the seven year period cannot be taken. Shelter. So back to you, Aniket. Uh, thank you, sir. I think Manuji has a wide experience working in the disciplinary committee. I believe out of the five years that he has been in the council, four years he has been in the disciplinary mechanism and therefore uh, very... Uh, Aniket, all five years. All five years, sir. So I think somebody who has a phenomenal experience working on all benches. Last year, I remember he was on the bench that was also uh, you know, considering all the government filed matters and complaints. So therefore, it was important that he shared his view also. Now, friends, let's come back to the standards. The standards on auditing, the SAs, like I mentioned, ye kis pe applicable hote? annual tax audit or annual companies audit. Pe. They have been now renumbered. The purane double AS, the, ya uske pehle ke standards, the, uska numbering hum, humare se karte the. like I mentioned, now the standards on auditing are aligned with the international standards issued by IWSP. Only thing is that they get modified for the Indian context, the SA 600 and the 699 specific examples where we have made certain amendments to ensure that the standards on auditing reflect the Indian perspective. But the numbering friends, we have taken it from what is the international practice and very nice. It's something that we can all learn and appreciate because they follow a sequential numbering pattern. And what this ensured is this: if there is a standard which comes in later or some for example, today, some of them are actually actively considering because of this coronavirus pandemic, there are certain audit procedures that we will not be able to perform. Yeah, we have not performed. 31st March inventory, for example, we could not do because we were all stuck in our homes in lockdown. Now, the standard itself provides for certain rollback procedures where we April in April and March ka inventory ka working. Kar sakte hai. But still, there are some other standards where it will not be possible for us to do a rollback. And what happens in those scenarios? The international community also, friends, is working on this. They are actively considering this. And say tomorrow they come up with a standard. The advantage of having these numbers, and therefore the project was also at the IASB level called the Clarity Project, is to have them numbered in the manner that Income Tax Act ki jaga 44A, 44AB, AC, AD, AE, bar bar sub clauses or subsections darling is not needed. Therefore, these, these standards are numbered in the manner that they are. 100 to 199 is the standard that talks about the introductory matters. This is just giving you an introduction. The series of 200 to 299. This, as I like to call, is the very important and critical aspect relating to the planning of the engagement and completion. So, yeah, engagement life cycle deal karte hue standards hai, the SA 200 to 299. The SA 200 talks about the overall objectives of the independent auditor and the conduct of the firm. Like I mentioned, the SA 200 read with the SQC1 and Section 144 of the Companies Act deal with the independence aspects of the auditor. What are the services that you can provide? What are the services that you are not supposed to provide? What is the definition of independence? How can you be construed as a firm which will be considered independent or not? All of that is covered under SA 200. Very important standard. Uh, if you look at the AQR, like I mentioned, the NFRA also very extensively discusses the SA 200. The SA 210 talks about agreeing the terms of engagement. General, we say it appointment letter, but in the auditing parlance, it is supposed to be referred to as an engagement letter. And what is an engagement letter? What should be the standard agreeing terms that must be forming part of any engagement letter? That is covered under SA 210. All of these standards have a very standardized, fixed construct and structure to it, where there is an introduction that talks about the procedures that have to be performed in the SA 210 friends for example there is a standard format even the institute has come out if required i'll be happy to share it with the kanpur charter Account society and you can circulate these <coughs> engagement letters basically talk about what is the responsibility of the management and what is the responsibility of the auditor why this becomes critical is and when we will go through the other standards you will understand this hum jab audit report dete hain hum SA 700 ka format leke basis of opinion, unqualified or qualified opinion. And you give a conclusion based on management responsibilities and your final opinion. Any other standard, we are giving certificates, 
या हम किसी और चीज का प्रोजेक्शन का काम कर रहे हैं उन सब में रिपोर्ट के अंदर भी हमें एंगेजमेंट लेटर का रेफरेंस देना है आई विल टेक यू थ्रू दी इलास्ट्रेशन दैट दी इंस्टीट्यूट मैं एंड देर फॉर दिस इज अ वेरी क्रिटिकल पीस ऑफ योर एंटायर प्रोसेस इवन वेन यू गो फॉर डिसिप्लिन मेकेनिज्म और इफ यू हैव टू फेस एनी स्क्रूटनी बाई सी बी आई और एनी अदर इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग अथॉरिटी आई प्रे दैट नेवर हैपन्स टू एनी ऑन ऑफ अस बट इफ इट हैड टू हैपन दिस एंगेजमेंट लेटर विल सर्वाइव एंड विल शो यू वॉट वॉज द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ द मैनेजमेंट वॉज द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ द ऑडिटर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू ड्राफ्ट इट हमें लगता है कि हमारा पच्चीस साल पुराना क्लाइंट है जब भी चाहिए मिल जाएगा अच्छी बात है सर्टिफिकेट ले लीजिए आप पर अगर और आप ही छाप लीजिए आपके ऑफिस पे पर अगर आपको नया क्लाइंट है स्पेसिफिकली ऑन दोस्ट चैलेंजिंग सर्कमस्टांसिस एंड नाउ वेन वी आर फेस्ड विथ सीनियरियो वेर देर इज अ लिक्विडिटी क्रंच वेर सम ऑफ द क्लाइंट्स इफ यू गो एंड से आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू अ क्वालिफाइड ओपिनियन या मैं ये एम्फोसिस ऑफ मैटर डालूंगा या हमारे इंस्टीट्यूट ने बोला है कि हमें ये एक पैराग्राफ एडिशनल डालना चाहिए और अगर क्लाइंट अग्री नहीं करता है ये नहीं हमें ये नहीं चाहिए आई वॉन्ट टू अपॉइंट अनदर ऑल्टर एट दो टाइम्स योर एंगेजमेंट लेटर विल प्रूव टू बी एक्सट्रीमली क्रिटिकल एंड क्रूशियल सो द एंगेजमेंट लेटर आइडियली शुड हैव द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज इट शुड ऑल्सो मैंशन द फीस दैट यू आर सपोज टू एस्टिमेट एंड मैंशन इन द एंगेजमेंट लेटर ऑल्सो एन आइडियल एंगेजमेंट लेटर शुड मैंशन द फैक्ट दैट द ऑडिटर्स डॉक्यूमेंट्स आर द लीन ऑफ द ऑडिटर एंड विल बी प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द ऑडिटर ऑल्सो दैट द कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी विल बी मेंटेन बाई हिम बट इन अ सिचुएशन दैट हिज financial records or his financial audit is selected for peer review or for any other purpose by the institute he will have to share these documents with his institute ye line bhi hame likhni zaruri hai kyunki kal uth ke aisa na ho ki aapki documents aapko submit karne peer review ke liye and your client says that you never agreed that you will share with me you have never taken my consent these are my confidential information how can you share it with a third party chartered accountant so all of those become part of the engagement letter i will be happy to share a format of it The SA 220 talks about the quality control for an audit of financial statement. What are the quality control procedures that you must ensure and maintain while auditing financial statements that are covered in 220? SA 230, very critical and important, talks about the documentation standards. Here, the standard provides that you must ideally have a permanent file and a current file. Your permanent file strictly, friends, covers all the aspects that do not. expect to be changed every year for example pan card list of bank accounts list of signatories composition of the board so these are all documents that must form a part of a permanent file the current file has documents relating to your current audit on basis of which you arrived at your opinion which was issued on your audit report dono ko alag maintain karna hai alag part mein karna hai the audit documentation clearly talks about it let me also share with you friends that jo initially akshay ji ne bataya that hamare liye as small and medium practitioners some way to maintain audit documentation in the level that is expected internationally or even by our institute is a challenge friends the institute and the council is also aware of these challenges that our members face and it is with this perspective that last year a fund of 30 crores has been set aside by the institute to make sure that we are able to give you these tools these mechanisms for you to follow i am happy to share that only yesterday we had this group meeting where the discussion happened on the rfp that has to float out very soon the rfp will be out and the institute is coming out with a extraordinary software where your entire process so starting from your engagement letter aap client ka naam likhiye year likhiye aur type of engagement se likhiye draft engagement letter system aapko nikal ke dega aapko agar documentation karna hai to cloud storage pe aap kariye kya kya cheeze aapko leni chahiye uski kya checklists hai all these standards of accounting and auditing will be found in the form of a checklist and will be placed there of course friends you are aware this is right now in the initial phase going to be on a recommendatory basis but there is also a view that exists that aaj ki tarikh mein jab udin mandatory ho gaya hai we must also ensure that before a chartered accountant is generating a udin how can you ensure that he has complied with these steps and only then the udin generation happens this is not happening today or tomorrow but this is a long term perspective of how we can improve the overall quality of our auditors and for that to happen i think we will all have to follow a certain standard like i mentioned in the beginning these standards are not a burden agar hum inhe follow karte hain this is actually a good protection for us like i mentioned in the case of udin so many chartered accountants have been saved from forged signatures because of that similarly if you are following standards you are able to then justify how you arrived at the opinion so sa 230 about audit documentation and also the institute is trying to make sure that we are able to provide you the platform and tools to ensure compliance with this but jab tak wo nahi aata hai iska matlab ye nahi ki hame follow nahi karna hai jab tool aayega tab hum karenge 
at least internally we must have a mechanism to follow these standards the sa240 talks about the responsibilities of auditors relating to fraud again we are all aware that the age old principle of greyhound and watchdog what is the responsibility you are not supposed to go looking for a fraud but if it comes to your attention you are supposed to immediately report it even the companies act now has a provision for reporting of frauds that cross the threshold of 1 crore so sa240 talks about fraud the 250 that talks about the consideration of laws and regulations in audit of financial statement i can assure you kafi logo ne standard ka compliance nahi dekha hoga what does this talk about कंसिडरेशन ऑफ लॉज एंड रेगुलेशन माने अगर आप टैक्स ऑडिट कर रहे हैं भैया आपको सिर्फ 40 क्लॉज के बारे में रिपोर्टिंग देके खत्म कर दिया और उसकी कंपनीज ऑडिट रिपोर्ट में कंपनीज एक्ट का कंप्लाइंस देके छोड़ दिया और हम सोचे हमारा काम हो गया भैया नहीं होता एस ए टू फिफ्टी टॉक्स अबाउट लॉज एंड रेगुलेशन जो कंपनी और एंटिटी को अप्लाई करते हैं एंड वेदर उसका कंप्लाइंस उसने किया है कि नहीं मैं आपको उसका सिंपल उदाहरण देता हूँ एक कंपनी है पच्चीस एम्प्लॉय है आप सब समझ गए बीस से ज्यादा है पर काफी बार पीएफ नहीं लेते हैं या रजिस्ट्रेशन नहीं है हम कभी हमारे रिपोर्ट में रिप्लाई रिपोर्ट नहीं करते थे एस ए टू फिफ्टी टॉक्स अबाउट दीज केसेस एंड नाउ फ्रेंड्स आफ्टर द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ नो क्लार दैट इज नॉन कंप्लाइंस ऑफ अदर लॉज एंड रेगुलेशन इफ यू लुक एट द वर्डिंग इन नो क्लार विच इज फॉर्मिंग पार्ट ऑफ द पार्ट ए ऑफ कोड ऑफ एथिक्स जो फर्स्ट जुलाई से एप्लीकेबल होगा नो क्लार और एस ए टू फिफ्टी की लैंग्वेज ऑलमोस्ट सेम है दे टॉक अबाउट अदर लॉज एंड रेगुलेशन they also talk about financial implication jis law mein financial implication hai usi ko aapko report karna hai and they also say that if the amount is material only then you are supposed to report it but these are all already existing under the existing framework of standards agar aapne nahi follow kiya theek hai but going forward with introduction of new code of ethics there is two mandates that require you to follow and report on the compliance of other laws and regulations therefore sa250 becomes extremely critical the sa260 that it was revised talks about communications with those charged with governance this is a management kehte hain if you are discussing anything or communicating anything with the management it is generally referred to as communication to those charged with governance you will see this in the sa70 700 also and all other standards they talk about tcwg management nahi bolte those charged with governance kehte hain sa265 deals with communicating deficiencies in internal control whichever have come across to you in the course of audit you are supposed to communicate again with the tcg that is the those charged with governance and management and finally the sa299 this deals with the joint audit of financial statement i think akshay ji was uh, a participant in this program sa299 sir is a very important standard that we all use as central auditors because in all public sector banks as you are aware friends the joint auditors take responsibility as the central statutory auditor and it is within the framework of sa299 that the responsibilities of auditors are divided the checklist the division all of that happens by the framework of s299 so like i said these standards are talking about the start and end the overall governance framework of our audit 300 to 499 this is the critical or the material aspect of the planning of and risk assessment very important for us to understand because two or three standards that i will very quickly take across the sa320 which talks about materiality in planning and performing an audit hum har bar kehte hain ki amount material hai ya nahi hai where does the term materiality come from the term materiality actually flows from sa320 sa320 deals with what is a material at a account level at the overall level and whenever you are do, uh, devising materiality friends it is important you can take benchmarks of a total assets or you can take a benchmark of revenue generally people apply a fixed percentage of revenue and then calculate materiality there are excel templates available which all larger firms follow i will also be happy to share a template of that form basically jo hum naya tool bana rahe hain usme bhi materiality auto calculate karke aa sake hum batayenge materiality of course depends on the risk assessment agar high risk client hai to threshold uncha hoga aur isliye uski materiality lower hogi but agar a normal client hai jisse hum day to day deal kar rahe hain जहाँ रिस्क ऑफ फ्रॉड नहीं है इन दोज केसेस फ्रेंड्स द मटीरियलिटी लेवल इज एक्सेप्टेबल एंड देर फॉर यू कैन डिराइव इट दिस स्टैंडर्ड्स टिपिकली डील विद द असेसमेंट ऑफ रिस्क एंड मटीरियलिटी एस ए फाइव हंड्रेड टू फाइव नाइनटी नाइन इज वॉट इज द क्रक्स एंड द बेसिस ऑफ ऑडिट दिस डील्स विद द एंटायर प्रोसीजर ऑफ ऑडिट स्टार्टिंग विद एस ए फाइव हंड्रेड दैट इज ऑडिट एविडेंस हाउ डू यू कलेक्ट एविडेंस हु डज इट बिलोंग टू द लीन ऑल ऑफ दैट इज 
discussed in the essay 500 and 501. Essay 505 deals with external confirmations. What are external confirmations? Agar hum satyam ke case mein jayen, jo 10-15 saal pehle hua tha, and we are all aware of the fraud that happened. The basic reason of that fraud to occur was that the bank balances that the company was reporting in the financial statements and on which the auditor was certifying, they were on the basis of a bank statement. Now a bank statement is not an external confirmation. What you can and must do as an auditor, as per SA505, is seek external confirmation from the bank. Aap head pe ya client se request karke bank ko bolye ke mera bank balance, client ka bank balance. As of 31st of March 2020, tha? and when they reply to you, that is a third party evidence. And the reliability of third party evidence under audit procedures is far higher than anything you can do. Audit map inquiry, kar sakte hai, aap observation, kar sakte hai, aap recomputation, kar sakte hai, ya aap confirmation. Le sakte hai. Confirmation is the strongest form of audit evidence because third party you confirm that this person's balance was so much in my In today's world, when there is a lockdown, physically obtaining confirmation may not be possible. But there is a tool, and again, I'm sharing this only with a knowledge perspective. I don't endorse any product or any website, but this has come to my knowledge and therefore I would like to share with you. There is a website called confirmations.com, which is in India. Mein bhi active hai. Right now, there are a few banks which are on board. What they are doing, friends, is that for any confirmation that you require, you simply bank ka naam or bank ka account number mention kariye, or authorized signator kone uska naam diye. Immediately, a request will go to that authorized signatory saying your auditor so and so has requested a bank balance on 31st March 20. He approves. On the approval, the bank will directly via email send you the confirmation. I would request all of you that please use whatever technological modes you can. It may be the confirmation.com portal. It may be emails or it may be any other form through which you can get third party evidence during the course of audit because the March audit is going to be extremely crucial. Lot of companies balance sheet. We don't have to think about results are going Of course, June has been given to June. But I'm based on my discussions with a lot of auditors and companies. The situation is very critical and bad. And therefore, this year is going to be very important for us when we are giving audit reports that we where especially your client has bank loans, hai, bank finances, hai, and payment, if you give audit report de denge, because the extended time, they may not be liable to pay installments of April, May, and June, but when it all accumulates and they have to pay the installment at the end of June or July, that is going to be a substantial amount and will make huge changes to the going concern ability of the engagement. Therefore, these external confirmations will prove extremely critical. Please ensure. 510 talks about the opening balances. The 520 is analytical procedures. What are analytical procedures? I don't think I have to elaborate in detail, but basically it expects that your uh, the standard on auditing requires that there must always be a comparative balance sheet. That is two years have to be compulsorily given. When you are doing that, analytical example can be what was the production last year? What is the production this year? Per unit cost of all these expense items or income items, what is the change? You compare them on a percentage terms. Analyticals is just, just year on year. For example, if you have electric consumption, and you see that there is a 30% spike in electricity consumption based on number of units. Then there must be an automatic question that what raised it? Is there a proportionate increase in production? Whether there is a proportionate increase in uh, revenue? Again, a lot of online tools and audit tools are available uh, to ensure that these analytical procedures and in fact, these all of these standards compliance happens. I would request that in this changed world, when things are changing, when our mode is changing, when we are all actually working from home and using technology in such a big way, we must all look at these audit tools which are available in the market, which we can all actively use to ensure that audit not only gets completed before time and on time, but also is done in accordance with our standards on auditing. So 520 talks about analytical procedures. These tools that I was mentioning in are also important in SA 530, that is audit sampling how statistical and non-statistical sampling can be done. And if you're taking a statistical sample, what are the basis of it? There are a lot of softwares that are available, which will give you a random number generator. And based on that random number generator, you can then have an audit sample. It may give you numbers. You just verify those specified transaction. This will not only help you to do an audit more efficiently, but tomorrow if that audit is scrutinized, 
और कल मनु भैया अगर डिसिप्लिनरी में पांच साल से है तीन और साल चार और साल रहते हैं सर और आपको पूछते हैं कि भैया आपने ये कैसे निकाला सैंपल यू कैन ऑलवेज से दिस इज द सॉफ्टवेयर दिस वॉज द प्रोसीजर आई पुट इन द सैंपल साइज दिस वॉज माई टारगेटेड साइज थर्टी सिक्सटी सैंपल्स आई टू वेरीफाई एंड दिस इज हाउ आई वेरीफाइड सो दो सॉफ्टवेयर एंड टूल्स विल भी एक्सट्रीमली क्रिटिकल फॉर यू टू प्रूव योर केस एज अ डॉक्यूमेंटेशन एस्पेक्ट ऑल्सो बिसाइड्स डूइंग दी ऑडिट मोर एफिशियंटली फाइव ट्वेंटी टॉक्स अबाउट अकाउंटिंग एस्टिमेट्स ऑल्सो वेरी क्रिटिकल विल बिकम स्पेशली बिकॉज ऑफ द एस्टिमेट्स एट मैनेजमेंट्स मेक इन दिस कोरोना सिचुएशन 550 deals with the related parties 560 as you are aware subsequent events events that occur after the balance sheet date how do you take effect of that generally the mode is to be the communication with management and inquiring with that ki after march is there something that has come to their knowledge which will significantly affect their position as of 31st of march what you can also do for subsequent events friends for example is when you are looking and doing the audit in august just don't ask for the client's tally data of april to march Subsequent events actually requires you that April से लेके अभी तक चालू साल के भी आप क्या क्या ट्रांजेक्शन हुए उसको वेरीफाई करिए और उसमें से अगर आपको कोई एक्सेप्शनल लिमिट दिखता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू सी दैट इन मे एंड जून लैक्स ऑफ रुपीज ऑफ लीगल फीस बीन पेड दैट क्वेश्चन मस्ट कम टू यू ये कौन सा केस था क्या था और ये किस ईयर के रिलेटिंग था एंड इफ दैट ईयर दैट इट रिलेट्स टू इज इन योर ऑडिट पीरियड देन दिस सब्सिक्वेंट प्रोसीजर्स अंडर एस ए फाइव सिक्सटी हेल्प यू टू bring out the correct true picture as of 31st march 20 sa 570 going concern again uh, don't need to share it with this chartered accountant audience we have all been learning the assumptions of audit ever since our college days or rather our 11 standard days but going concern very important for us to assess on a every annual basis or har saal hum assessment karna whether the books of accounts are to be maintained on a going concern basis or not if not then the challenges of how you fair value it and put it on the books of accounts but sa 570 talks about going concern 580 again a very important standard talks about written representation hum jise daily bhasha mein certificate kehte hain ki humne client se is cheez ka certificate le liya tha whatever the client gives it to you in oral or written form is within the standard already defined as written written repre- uh, representation and written representations friend because written is always a stronger form of evidence you must at the conclusion of an audit on the date of you signing a report so jis din ka audit report hai usi date ka written representation management se lena hai there is again good drafts available in the market i'll be happy to share it with you uh, op- which talk about where the management has given you certain representation about existence about other assertions that are made in the financial statement always advisable to have a copy of the written representations with you finally i'll just Uh, try and conclude these standards and auditing so that we can move to two three important other topics that we want to discuss due to the paucity of time 600 to 699 talk about using the work of others usme other auditor aa gaya yani agar aap central auditor hai to aap branch auditor ka use karte hain agar aap holding company ke auditor hai to aap subsidiary company ka auditor ka work use karte hain those get covered under sa 600 india has made a very important deviation as compared to the international standards varna sara kaam international network firms ke paas hi jayega jin jin ki subsidiaries foreign mein hai therefore we have made a carve out at the institute level to make sure that domestic auditors can still continue to be auditors of holding companies in india 610 talks about internal auditors and 620 talks about using the work of auditors experts experts can be multiple you may be in oil and gas then you may be using some or some kind of expert day to day life mein as 15 ki compliance ke liye hum actuary ka use jo work karte hain that actuary we are relying on on the basis of the standard sa 700 to 799 i think uh, 700 is something that we all are aware of my request with folded hands to all of you please follow this standard agar aap standard ke pehle 100 parne chhod denge to bhi chalega piche illustrations hai sa 700 ke there are four illustrations rather five illustrations that the sa 700 has each one for a very important piece if it may be it is for a listed company for a unlisted company for a holding company which has subsidiaries for a independent entity for non corporate entities All the possible forms of report, जिसका हम annual audit करते हैं, उन सभी के illustration दिए गए हैं. Please refer to it. There was a change made in last year at FRRB. It is so embarrassing for us that when we see some audit reports and we look at that the auditor has referred to the audit report which was not in vogue. It was old, two, three year old format of the audit report is given. The SA 700 friends therefore is very important. I request all of you. ये एक standard है जिसके illustrations हमें हमारे desktop पे रखने ही चाहिए. 701 जो ऑडिट लिस्टेड कंपनीज का करते हैं लास्ट ईयर कैम बिकेम मैंडेटरी दिस ईयर आल्सो 
key audit matters that is cam is going to be critical you will be surprised even last year lot of auditors have not reported cam in their financials in the report agar you are one of them i request once again please review sa 701 and ensure that the communication to be done as cam is done in this corona times lot of times you if you are not able to qualify or you feel that qualification or eom that is emphasis of matter is not required you can still include those matters as a part of a kam so ye aapke benefit ke liye hai it is not a liability or a onus on you but it will help you to correctly discharge your functions 705 talks about the modifications in the opinion of independent auditor that means agar aap unqualified opinion de rahe hain to 700 aap qualified opinion de rahe hain it can be a qualified opinion it can be a adverse opinion it can be a disclaimer opinion it can have emphasis of matter whatever is the situation all of them are covered by 705 and its various illustrations that are covered the eom is in 6706 the other qualification that is adverse disclaimer and qualified opinion is covered by 705 710 tells you that i think i covered this earlier also comparative information is compulsory aap audit report annual bana rahe hain current year or previous year dono dena zaruri hai and 720 deals with other information if you look at the report that we issue under companies act last para deals with other information wahan hum asset 720 ko refer karte hain 800 to 899 generally day to day practice mein nahi kaam aata hai therefore i am going to skip this and not take to you in detail so now i come with the residue portion of the standards i'll just once again briefly give you a heads up sqc which is the overall being umbrella under which there are standards agar aap historical information de rahe hain to annual audit hai agar audit hai to sas अगर ऑडिट नहीं है और रिव्यू है विच आई मेंशन इज अ लोअर फॉर्म ऑफ अश्योरेंस ऑडिट इज ए एब्सोल्यूट फॉर्म नॉट एब्सोल्यूट बट रीजनेबल अश्योरेंस रिव्यू इज नॉट गिविंग इन दैट स्ट्रॉन्ग लेवल ऑफ अश्योरेंस एंड अटेस्ट फंक्शन इसमें अगर आप एन्यूअल रिव्यू का रिपोर्ट देते हैं तो एस आर ई टू फोर डबल जीरो विल बी एप्लीकेबल अगर आप क्वार्टरली रिव्यू कर रहे हैं तो एस आर ई टू फोर वन जीरो इज एप्लीकेबल ऑल ऑफ अस वर डूइंग लिस्टेड कंपनी ऑडिट एंड आर डूइंग क्वार्टरली रिपोर्टिंग लिमिटेड रिव्यू फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ Clause 49 of SEBI's listing agreement. You will, if you look at the report that we give to the BSC or NSC, it is as per SRE 2410. And therefore, historical information के दोनों part अपने ने complete कर दिए हैं. One related to the audits, other related to the review. I hope I have been able to clearly demonstrate what are these assurance functions and why it is important. Now we will move on to the two other important aspects, which I think uh, are. also equally applicable rather more applicable for sme practitioners one talks about sae that is standard on assurance engagement these are standards jahan hum assurance to de rahe hain but historical information nahi hai kyunki historical information hai aur audit hai to sa aur agar review hai to sre but in cases that you are providing standard on certain assurance engagement which relates to future then sae is applicable what is a classic example let me share with you friends in our practice certain times you are involved where the auditor or the client comes to you as an auditor and says sir bank ne humse 5 saal ka data certify ya projection certify karne ko bole hain question is can we do it can you simply certify as you certify audit report 5 year audited financials and give a audit report saying ye 5 saal ka projection hai so friends the answer is very clearly no as per clause 3 of part 1 of the second schedule of the chartered accountants act a member in practice is deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct if he engages in estimation of earnings contingent upon future transactions in a manner which may lead the user to believe that he vouches for the accuracy of the forecast meaning thereby agar hum koi audit report या प्रोजेक्शन में विदाउट एनी रिपोर्ट दे रहे हैं और सिंपली पांच साल का प्रोजेक्शन हमने साइन और स्टैम्प करके दे दिया यू विल बी कंसीडर्ड गिल्टी ऑफ क्लॉस थ्री ऑफ पार्ट वन ऑफ द सेकंड शेयर इंटरमीडिएट में हमने जो सब्जेक्ट्स पढ़े हैं उसमें ना एस्ट्रोलॉजी था ना एस्ट्रोनॉमी था इसीलिए हम फ्यूचर तो प्रिडिक्ट कर नहीं सकते हमें करना भी नहीं चाहिए बट एट द सेम टाइम देर आर सर्टन रिक्वायरमेंट इट मे बी फॉर सेविंग इट मे बी फॉर वैल्यूएशन पर्पज और सिंपलिस्टिकली इन आर प्रैक्टिस फॉर बैंकिंग पर्पज where prospective financial information is to be audited 5 saal ka 
आपको अश्योरेंस देना है आई एम सॉरी टू यूज द वर्ड ऑडिट यू आर सपोज टू गिव सर्टन अश्योरेंस फॉर दोज the institute has come out with the saes the standards on assurance engagement so ye historical information nahi hai ye future ke liye ya alag purpose ke liye hai isliye they do not form a part of sa but we call them sae and there is a sae 3400 which very clearly lays out how you can certify this prospective financial information i'll give you a simple example friends what you cannot do as an auditor is you cannot simply state That पिछले पांच साल में इस कंपनी का ग्रोथ रेट दस टका था या टेन परसेंट था इसीलिए अगले पांच साल में भी दस टका होगा और इसके हिसाब से उसकी रेवेन्यू इतनी और प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी इतनी और मैंने स्टैम्प और सर्टिफाई कर दिया इफ यू डू दैट यू आर इन वायलेशन बट वॉट यू आर अलाउड टू डू इज वेरीफाई दर्किंग दरिथमेटिक्स ऑफ दैट कैलकुलेशन एंड सर्टिफाई इन योर रिपोर्ट विच इज गिवन इन एस थर्टी फोर हंड्रेड एंड मैंशन दैट आई हैव वेरीफाइड दैट last 5 saal 10% growth tha i verified that the company has used this growth as a projection for 5 years and that this calculation you are certifying you are not certifying the happenstance ke ye cheez hogi but aap yes certify kar sakte hain ki iska calculation theek hai so very important distinction that has to be made therefore i wanted to touch this upon this i think uh, manoj ji had also included this in the topic that i was to take uh, whether we can certify as a chartered accountant prospective financial information this is the large uh, answer to it if you even look at the udin faqs there is a faq number 26 that the udin has given out usme bhi humne isko detail mein explain kiya hai but i wanted to deal with this uh, you know in this today's session so please comply with with this standard now we will go on so sae like i mentioned the examination of prospective is sae 3400 two other saes not generally used uh, that much the assurance report on controls at service organization and the engagement reports not very commonly used generally outsource function jahan hota hai wahan ye dena padta hai now let me come upon the related services that is the srs engagements to perform agreed upon procedures again very very important critical standard friends kafi bar aapke paas aisa case hota hoga jahan client aake aapko bolta hoga ki bhaiya hame ye cheez ka certificate chahiye वो डीलरशिप है और उसको उसका डीलर या जो कंपनी है जिसका डीलरशिप है वो उसको कोई रिपोर्ट मांग रहा है इन्वेंट्री के बारे में कोई रिपोर्ट मांग रहा है सर्टन अदर एस्पेक्ट्स दैट दे वांट टू वेरीफाई द लिक्विडेशन या मेरे को रियलाइजेशन ऑफ करंट डेटर्स कितना होगा ये सब जो प्रोसीजर्स हैं हम अभी क्या करते हैं बढ़िया सा सर्टिफिकेट बोल्ड में सेंट्रल लाइन करके लिखते हैं और नीचे लिख देते हैं दिस इज टू सर्टिफाई दैट वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स माई रिक्वेस्ट अगेन विद फोल्डेड हैंड्स टू नॉट डू इट देर इज अ ब्यूटिफुल स्टैंडर्ड दैट एग्जिस्ट to perform agreed upon procedures firstly it is not an assurance standard so therefore you are out of the ambit of providing assurance service second it gives the user the desired information and you as a auditor are given such safeguards within the format because it's very specifically in the srs if you please open the standard and all of these standards are available on the institute's website ici.org if any of these essays or srs you want to have a more deeper understanding each of them have been converted into a separate module and are in the digital learning hub aap usme ja ke bhi har ek standard ko specifically study kar sakte hain but srs 44 4400 talks about agreed upon procedures where you mention that this was the engagement letter one two three four steps has been requested by the management kya perform kijiye aur humne one two three four perform karke ye conclusion derive kiya hai there are certain very good disclaimers within that report and the format which you will be using here so please refer to the srs 4400 and 4410 deals with compilation engagements what are compilation engagements hame kafi bar koi client aake bolta hai bhaiya aap unaudited financial statements hame de dijiye bhaiya agar wo tally ka print out leke aa gaya aur aapne niche sign aur stamp kar diya upar unaudited likhe se wo unaudited nahi ho jata aapki signature aur stamp karne ke matlab hai ki you have provided certain assurance to that so please make sure that aap kisi bhi balance sheet ya financial statements ko without a corresponding report nahi certify karte hain isiliye jab hum audit report dete hain bhaiya hum usme likhte hain as per our report of even date and then that report is to be referred along with the financials similarly if you want to give certain information in an unaudited format the srs 4410 will be extremely useful it talks about compilation 
वेर इट्स कि मैंने इसको सिर्फ देखा है और इसको इस फॉर्मेट में प्रेजेंट किया है मैंने ऑडिट नहीं किया है मैंने रिव्यू नहीं किया है कंपाइलेशन इज द लोएस्ट फॉर्म इट इज नॉट इवन एन अश्योरेंस द इंस्टीट्यूट कम आउट विद दिस स्टैंडर्ड प्लीज रिफर टू दिस स्टैंडर्ड एंड द इलेस्ट्रेशन गिवन इन इट सो दैट यू कैन करेक्टली डिस्चार्ज योर फंक्शन नाउ फाइनली I would like to touch upon this very, very important and critical guidance note. I am sure most of us will not be even aware of the existence of this guidance note. But this guidance note deals with reports or certificates. So, जो reports S A S A E S R S में cover नहीं हुए हैं, and सारे certificates are to be done through this guidance note. And it is such a fantastic guidance note. If you do not have a copy of it, please download it. I would request the Kan uh, the Kanpur Chartered Accountant Society to also circulate a copy of this guidance note. This guidance note covers other than audits of review and historical information that has to be given. इसके पीछे जो illustration दिया है, I have taken the entire illustration as a screenshot to explain to you the importance of this guidance note. And my request to each one of us is, आज के बाद अगर हमें कोई भी certificate मांगता है, हम इस format को refer करें. और अगर हम इस फॉर्मेट में रिपोर्ट या सर्टिफिकेट देते हैं आई एम टेलिंग यू रिस्क दैट वी कैरी इज गोइंग टू बी रिड्यूस टू लॉट ऑफ एक्सटेंड आल्सो द प्रोफेशनल अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर अस इंक्रीज एंड आई टेक यू थ्रू दिस इलस्ट्रेशन दैट इज गिवन इफ यू लुक इट फ्रेंड्स दिस द वर्ड यर इज प्रैक्टिस रिपोर्ट फॉर टर्न नेटवर्क नेट प्रॉफिट इन ऑल आर चार्ट अकाउंट प्रैक्टिस कभी ना कभी या शायद हर साल हमने एक नेटवर्क सर्टिफिकेट इंडिविजुअल को कंपनी को प्रोपराइटर को या पार्टनरशिप को दिया होगा इन सभी केसेस में हमें ये सर्टिफिकेट का इलेस्ट्रेटिव फॉर्मेट यूज करना चाहिए टू होम सो यू वेर इट मे कंसर्न दिस इज टू सर्टिफाई दैट प्लीज डू नॉट यूज इट दिस इज अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल फॉर्मेट इफ यू लुक एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ दिस फॉर्मेट द पैरा वन डील्स विद दिस रिपोर्ट और सर्टिफिकेट इज इश्यूड इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द टर्म्स ऑफ आर एंगेजमेंट लेटर डेटेड आपको अगर याद होगा मैंने जब स्टैंडर्ड ऑन ऑडिटिंग में बात किया था मैंने कहा था कि ऑडिट रिपोर्ट के अलावा आप एस आर ई एस आर एस या गाइडेंस नोट में भी अगर कोई सर्टिफिकेट देते हैं यू मस्ट ऑलवेज स्टार्ट विद रेफरेंस टू योर एंगेजमेंट लेटर बिकॉज दैट स्पेसिफाइज वॉट इज द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड वॉट यू आर सपोज टू बी डूइंग सेकेंड टॉक्स अबाउट द अकम्पनिंग स्टेटमेंट ऑफ एनुअल टर्न ओवर सो यू मैंशन अगर आपने नेटवर्क दिया है तो नेटवर्क अगर आप एनुअल टर्न ओवर वेरीफाई कर रहे हैं तो एनुअल टर्न ओवर वॉट डज इट कंटेन वेर आर यू ब्रॉट इट फ्रॉम the third para friends deals with the management's responsibility of the statement what it mentions is that the preparation of this statement so net worth statement hai inventory statement hai ya koi aur statement aap de rahe hain it is prepared by the management and that responsibility is very clearly laid out here in this certificate the fourth is the management's also response responsible for ensuring the company compliance with the requirement of the tender kafi baar tender apply karne ke liye hamare clients aake hame kehte hain ki hame aap turnover certificate dijiye then network certificate dijiye this paragraph very clearly lays out that other points that are to be covered whether the company is eligible or not it is the management's responsibility and we do not provide any assurance for the other aspects what is our responsibility is covered under para 5 pursuant to the requirement of the tender document agar aap tender ke response mein de rahe hain to nahi hai to you can suitably amend this paragraph and state that the amounts in the annual turnover have been accurately extracted from the audited financial statements so you are only extracting from the annual audit and giving it here then you are saying that for if it deals with current assets current liabilities you also mention that if it deals with net worth you mention that part in para 4 you will see that the computation of net worth is done how on the basis of so and so clause of the tender document if there is no tender aap samjho kisi ko visa ke liye नेट वर्थ सर्टिफिकेट दे रहे हैं आप लिख लीजिए हमने नेट वर्थ कैसे अराइव किया है कैपिटल प्लस रिजर्व या इस बेसिस पर अराइव किया है The sixth talks about the auditable financial statements that you have referred to. कौन सा report था किस दिन कौन से auditor ने sign किया था और उसको मैंने rely किया है वो fact आपको यहाँ देखना है. Seventh point में आप लिख रहे हैं कि मैंने ये certificate within the terms of this guidance note दिया है. Eight is an affirmative statement that you are following the SQC. So you are following the guidance note and like I mentioned, SQC is the overall umbrella. And ninth is your opinion. कि based on your examination. आपको कौन सी अमाउंट लग रही है सो दिस बिकम्स क्रिटिकल दैट इज योर नाइन्थ इज योर ओपिनियन एंड टेंथ इज द रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑफ यूज हम कभी नहीं लिखते हैं और क्या होता है काफी बार क्लाइंट ने एच डी एफ सी बैंक में लोन अप्लाई की आपका सर्टिफिकेट लेके गया लोन नहीं मिली वो बैंक ऑफ बड़ौदा में जाता है और फिर क्या होता है वही सर्टिफिकेट वहां देता है 
मैंने आज तक किसी डॉक्टर के पास ऐसा नहीं देखा है कि आपको सर्दी हुई और आप चले गए आपने बोला सर ये तो हर साल सर्दी होती है मेरे को विंटर में पांच छह साल की दवाइयां दे दीजिए कोई डॉक्टर आपको छह साल की दवाई साथ में नहीं देता एज अ प्रोफेशनल हमें भी छह या सात बैंक की अगर एप्लीकेशन के लिए कोई रिपोर्ट देना है वाई शुड बी गिव अमन सर्टिफिकेट लेट्स ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड दैट एंड देर फॉर सम पीपल आस्क मी दैट सर इफ समी कम्स इन आस्क अ नेटवर्क सर्टिफिकेट फ्रॉम मी एंड सेज दैट सर Uh, can you at the end mention that this is issued for the specific purpose of visa application i go one step further and say this is issued for the specific purpose of us visa application to kal udke agar usko uk ka visa lena hai bhaiya to bhi aapke paas wapas aaye this restriction of use very clearly lays out that this is for the us embassy not meant for the uk embassy similarly what i'm trying to say is whichever is the intended user of your certificate please ensure that this paragraph on restriction of use is mentioned and finally friends at the bottom you are supposed to mention your signature your firm name the due deal is now required the place of signature and your signature so uh, i think i with this i have tried to cover the overall ambit of the standards last question that generally comes to me also when i'm dealing with these standards and i think the two faqs that we discussed on the prospective financial information as well as the unaudited financial statement i have covered it in this slide last question that always comes to me is sir kya hum certified true copy de sakte hain please be clear that the supreme court has a judgment categorically said that the chartered accountants are not gazetted officers and certified true copy is to be given only by a gazetted officer yes still i understand there are times and opportunities when the bank seeks certain certification from you स्पेसिफिकली इनकम टैक्स का जो रिटर्न होता है वो हमसे एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं आप एक्नोलेजमेंट को ट्रू कॉपी करके दीजिए प्लीज डू नॉट जस्ट साइन एंड स्टैम्प एंड सबमिटेड दीज एक्नोलेजमेंट मस्ट ऑलवेज बी अकम्पनीड बाय अ सर्टिफिकेट लाइक आई मैं सर्टिफिकेट अर्लियर यू कैन यूज द गाइडेंस टोर्ड ऑन सर्टिफिकेट यूज दैट फॉर्मेट एंड से दैट द अमाउंट दैट इज गिवन टू मी इन दिस डॉक्यूमेंट इन दिस एक्नोलेजमेंट आई हैव अग्रीडेड विद द इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट वेबसाइट and the gross total income or the net total income agrees with that filed with the itd you are not supposed to go any further please also always mention the date on which you verified because you and me are aware that subsequently the, there may be opportunities for the client to go and revise his return so on the date that you have verified the income tax return please state it in your certificate don't blindly certify and attest the income tax acknowledgement to the returns you must always accompany them with a certificate i think with this i have uh, come to the concluding paragraph of uh, my presentation i thank you all for a very patient hearing i hope i have been able to take you through uh, the entire standards uh, the overview of engagement standards answered uh, some of the important questions that we face in day to day practice aur agar koi aur question hai aap puchna chahe i am available i'll be more than happy to answer i thank the kanpur chartered accountant society and my dear friend and elder brother in the council manu ji for inviting me and hosting this event thank you very much thank you aniket uh, it was uh, really wonderful and uh, um the number of viewers attending kept on increasing rather than decreasing as normally is the case you mentioned with something associated with standards so uh, you have managed to explain the whole thing in a very simple language very easy to understand language and i am sure it has uh, really helped all the members i'll be taking you through some of the comments which we are receiving all are good comments and uh, as regards queries uh, i think before i open the session for akshay bhai and anil bhai i'll just uh, uh, go through the questions which you have received you can answer them uh, you can aniket read the question and uh, give an answer so rajat ji uh, assurance certificate to projected balance sheet like i covered in my presentation if you can uh, recall we have very clearly stated that you are not supposed to do a projection but what you can do is you can give a report within the standard the sa3400 was discussed i request you please refer to the sa3400 which deals with prospective financial information the illustration given there and usko agar aap dete hain to aap aage ke projection certify kar sakte hain okay then there was one relating to the pdf form and soft copy very important again i get it uh, very often whether your records can be kept in soft copy the answer is yes the evidence act allows for it uh, the supreme court in various judgments has said that even if you maintain your documents 
in a e form or a soft copy it is allowed it is allowable it will become even more important now when we are doing audits uh, on a remote basis where we may not be have access to the client's premises but again like i said the auditor's responsibility doesn't go down you have to ensure that you can rely on that authenticity so if he's sending you an invoice or a voucher it is up to you to decide whether you are relying on the authenticity or not but as far as your documents are concerned yes lot of firms do it and the standards also permit you to keep your data in soft copy this so is the next question uh, can compilation engagement accepted by external auditors no so if you are an external auditor you are bound by the standards on audit the essays you will not be taking up the compilation because then if you look at our at code of ethics uh, bajpai ji internationally you will be surprised that bookkeeping and auditing can be done as a function it is not regarded as a conflict of independence position even largest economies allow it but in india from day one our forefathers have been very clear that if you are providing assurance services you will not do bookkeeping service and compilation is similar to uh, exercise of bookkeeping where you are preparing the financials as per a required format so yes you cannot external address cannot do it can page staff of the audit firm become engagement partner no the engagement partner has to be a partner of the firm word he a partner use kiya hai sir to page staff nahi aa payega whether udd is required in projected report yes it is required if you are using a certificate report right now after 1st of july for all attestations udd has been made mandatory yes just a second and just a second Yes, I must compliment uh, the format in which Manuji these questions are coming extremely uh, professional with uh, photographs and names. I have done a lot of webcasts, but this is uh, something really unique. My compliments to you and the Kanpur uh, Chartered Accountant, sir. Just a second, I lost it somewhere. I'm just coming back to the question. Yes. So representation services. जो इनकम टैक्स स्क्रूटनी असेसमेंट है उसे हम रिप्रेजेंटेशन सर्विसेज कहते हैं इफ यू लुक एट द कोड ऑफ एथिक्स पार्ट ए इट डील्स विद दीज सर्विसेज लाइक आई मेंशन फाइलिंग ऑफ रिटर्न वी हैव सेड एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सर्विस एंड देयरफॉर आउट ऑफ द गैम्बिट इनकम टैक्स स्क्रूटनी फॉल्स विद इन व्हाट इज डिफाइंड इन द कोड ऑफ एथिक्स एज अ रिप्रेजेंटेशन सर्विस देयर वी हैव सेड दैट इफ यू हैव सफिशिएंट सेफगार्ड्स विद इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू लोअर द रिस्क एंड एंश्योर दैट नन ऑफ द इंडिपेंडेंस इज गेट्स हैम्पर्ड then and the risks are defined in the standard there is intimidation risk so all of that risks if you are able to demonstrate have been brought down you can do a scrutiny assessment what does that mean i'll give a simple example aapki do partner ki firm hai agar ek audit kar raha hai aur agar tax mein dusra banda jata hai and he appears then you are very clearly able to demonstrate that there can be no bearing of the tax or the assessment on my audit procedures for a single proprietor and having no other staff it may become a challenge within the new code of ethics to demonstrate ideally you must have certain staff delegated which does this work so that you are able to clearly distinguish that there is no conflict gst return company auditor can file the administrative services again i will go back to as defined in the code of ethics uh, we have clearly stated that this is the gst return is only a uh, compilation of all the data and filing it it does not involve application of any mind per se and therefore we are as of now the position is that you can do it yes scam is as of today only applicable for listed companies rather it is only mandatory for listed companies agar aap chahe aur ise recommendatory karke dena chahe you can always do it yes previous year figures are compulsory to be maintained it is a requirement of the standard he is asking in non company cases also yes sir because the standard and auditor as a chartered accountant are binding on you and you are following your essays while issuing a tax audit report also is it mandatory to give udin with estimated and projected balance sheet i want, i think this question has come earlier the answer is yes so can a financial statement again agar aap meri screen share karenge maine bada sa the usme diya tha last slide certified true copy as chartered accountants we are not authorized to give true copy ye kaam gazetted officers ka hai ya notary ka hai hame ye nahi karna hai and agar aapko kisi requirement ke liye usko certify karna hai ye information maine verify ki hai for example you have a copy of the financial statements you can very well certify that this is the same data that has been filed with mca 
and you can say that I have verified from the MCA portal the XBRL filing and that these numbers are agreeing. Again, I would request you to refer to the guidance note on certificates. I'll sorry, AP Dorai. Yes, the performer of certificate on guidance note. Actually, I, I took you through it, all the 10 paragraphs. I would request uh, the Kanpur Chartered Account Society to please circulate the guidance note also to the members. It is available in soft copy. Yes, UDIN will be available for compilation. Is required for oh, wait compilation. It's a very good question. So a compilation engagement is typically not an assurance and audit function. Uh, I will have to go back and check with the UDIN directorate. But my view, personal view, again is that it will not be required. A very good question, Mohitji. But uh, because it is a compilation, it is not falling within the assurance ambit. Uh, in my view, your UDIN may not be required. Yes. Answer to projected financial statements we have already answered is yes. Again, uh, where the formats are specified, let's be very clear and understand this from a larger perspective. Sometimes bank come and say, this is certificate ka format. Hai. The banks are not in a position to command any certificate outside of the ones which are listed by RBI. If RBI has certified, if it is in the master circular and it exists, then we will give them up. But sometimes loan ke liye wo bote hai, bhaiya, ye hamare bank ka internal certificate. Hai. I would request, please go to the bank. And therefore, that pink book that I referred to, the compending of auditing standards, aap ja ke bataye, this is our standard. I am not able to certify this. And believe me, nine out of 10 cases, the managers are always going ahead and asking for certain requirements which are never required by the bank, never approved by the board, only to save his own personal skin. He sometimes goes and asks that you please give me a certificate. I'll give you one small example because of UDIN, which came out to us. A bank uh, in India, uh, they the manager was asking our chartered accountant that please give me a certificate that funds which are disbursed will be utilized as per RBI guidelines. Such a broad certificate. And he kept pestering him that you certificate not The matter was referred to us in the institute. We immediately raised it with the bank, with IB and RBI. And that person now stands transferred and uh, is no longer serve in service where he can deal with any chartered accountants or any public. So again, point being, aapko, sometimes if you are faced with such a situation, please raise it within the, the institute, uh, Manuji ko bataiye, council mein bataiye, Udin group ko bataiye, and we will make sure that such unreasonable certificates are not sought after. Yes, sir. Uh, Aniket, uh, the question is very relevant because what is happening in bank branch audits, many times along with the bank branch audits, certain certificates are required and the format thereof uh, are given in the electronic uh, we have to certify that electronically by putting the digital signatures format is already there on the bank's uh, site uh, or, or whatever the data is there there are practical problems what a member can do about that so sir those certificates like i uh, shared with you, the SA, the bank audit report the lfar those are all approved by the bank discussed with rbi and institute level so in those certificates, I would highly recommend that you must use the format that the bank and the CSAs are demanding. I am talking about, sir, other certificates, which in normal course, when you are applying for loan, the banks ask for you. For the certificates that you refer to, sir, I think these are all uh, within the gambit that have been approved by RBI and the IBA. But these are not on these, uh, according to the guidance note. Anyway, in, yes. in that case, yes, the sir. member can't change it. So it, yes, in, in yes, absolutely, sir. Correct. What details in project report attestation need to be filed? Uh, right. I don't think I follow uh, Phil. So again, I, the question de deals with SA three four double zero. Please refer to that standard and the illustration. Any question, I, I am more than happy to answer it offline. You can get in touch with me, Manuji. Uh, share the email address and contact details. The previous question, please. Manu, Manu. Manuji. A slow question, Anna. So, yes, hey, this is an. Uh, so, the, in, in relation to this question, I'll uh, let me be very categorical that you can maintain it in electronic form and store it in electronic form. Various judgments of the Supreme Court uh, to this effect also uh, to your favor. 
we have not referred to the it act anywhere in the standard auditing but because it is a legislation of the central government uh, applicable to us you will go through section 3 and 4 very clearly mentions what can be stored in electronic form and not uh, there is no adherence or mention of them except i believe one standard on audit evidence which deals with uh, talking of storage in electronic format but like i said uh, no restriction the dsc uh, uh, we have come out with a very clear guidance yesterday i request you to please visit ica.org usme humne bataya hai ki ab dsc ke sath certify karna hai what are the section 3 and 4 of the it act and the indian evidence act uh, that comes to your rescue and because of which you are able to certify okay so internal auditor becoming a statutory auditor is not permitted under the code of ethics however the because uh, there is a one year period that the code of ethics requires you to uh, have before you take up that role that is covered in the code of ethics not in the standard of auditing but i am happy to answer it in the question was different little different uh, anuket he was just asking uh, the restriction on the number of years if one can be uh, an internal auditor i think there is no like restriction like i mentioned nahi no, number of years to aap kitne hi ban sakte hain if you want to be acha from internal auditor statutory auditor you have to have a one year cooling period but there is no restriction on the number of years yes sir you are right there is uh, the, uh, the rotation only applies for the statutory audits correct mohit ji i have answered this question one confuse so this is something that uh, see if you look at the code of ethics if you look at the start of it it very clearly defines this in, the independence is a state of mind and also in the standards and the ethical requirements it says very clearly how the conduct and the letter and spirit of it has to be followed uh, in this example friends my view will be especially looking at how the interpretation of 144 has been done uh, by the nf nfra by the mca if you are okay opining on the tax liability if you are the statutory auditor my answer is you should not do it as an internal auditor i do not see any challenge in doing it no dues on account of land revenue so that has to be given by the land revenue authorities and not by the chartered accountant correct can internal auditor do gst audit no you cannot do it there is a clear uh, code of ethics uh, manu ji i think a code of ethics pe bhi aapko session karna chahiye because i think lot of these questions relate to the you know, revised code, code where we have yes yes sir yes like i said these are all mandated by government and therefore for these certificates if they are issued by the government grants uh, under the statute you will have to follow those certificates i have only discussed that guidance note to bring into your attention that wherever the format does not exist for example net worth total assets revenue for those that certificate can uh, the guidance note will be useful yes absolutely yes aniket ji uh, you will have to generate a union I think we have answered this, Deepak ji. Sir, ne jo bataya bank branch ke liye apko certificate separately jo mang rahe hain at the branch level, it is uh, advisable to append your DSC and submit them individually because they are compiled and reviewed and reported as such. So, if you are preparing separate segments, the separate financial statements. ideally should not be required if you are uh, certifying the union has to be at a entity level because your report and your opinion will be at one level and therefore in my view only one union for the entire entity and get apart from that we have received 50 at least 50 to 60 other comments that it was a wonderful presentation and uh, people are very happy and were very uh, attentive and apart from you i am receiving a lot of congratulations for having called such a wonderful speaker so now i open the session for uh, anil bhai and akshay anil you proceed first yeah yeah uh, uh, aniket number one you know obviously i think the session has been wonderful uh, you've covered uh, you know literally everything 
Uh, just a few things, one or two things. Number, uh, you know, you talked about the retention of the records of seven years. Now there, I think you know, uh, finally uh, we would have to be governed by the corresponding act. Like you know, maybe GST and income tax six years is fine, but I think the Companies Act talks of eight years. So there, maybe you know, the uh, para 83 of the SQC one, uh, we would have to uh, probably t uh, read it as eight years. Am I right in the interpretation? So uh, Anil ji, uh, very yeah. rightly mentioned that the the specific acts mandate the retention for the company. So that eight years under the Companies Act is for the company to maintain its accounts. It's this is regarding auditors' documents. So my records as an auditor of that company, uh, whose audit I have done. So I may have the engagement letter. I may have extract of certain ledgers that I have verified. I may have certain supporting documents, invoices. वो जो मेरी audit file है, वो तो मुझे सात साल ही रखनी है सर. Company हो, partnership का proprietor हो. But I like mentioned, हाँ, client के लिए the retention period is as per the specified act. So, so you know, just to match that, I think you know, just in case the company does get into an issue, probably you know, which relates to eight years. And then uh, the auditor is asked either I take shelter of the SQC one or uh, you know uh, probably uh, go with uh, the acts and uh, uh, maintain it for eight years. I mean that's a practical sir, viewpoint. Yeah, sir, I would still uh, advise that the, seven years is okay. yes. Okay. So, uh, so and then uh, second, since you know both you and Manu are there, just a suggestion I have had for a few years. I told Manu also. We, with respect to the digital signatures, if you know the institute can uh, get in and uh, uh, ensure an SMS-based uh, kind of uh, use for uh, the digital, because the, I think it's a huge risk all the uh, members are carrying, because you know many of them give it to the staff to uh, use it, uh, and then uh, you know it could be misused, obviously. No, absolutely, sir. I think that mechanism. Even uh, thankfully, now we have a video recording that they do before issue of DSC. Earlier, you know, somebody could have misused our documents and got another DSC in our name. Also, uh, we'll surely take it up, sir, within the Ministry of IT. Uh, we are having close uh, discussions with them. I uh, next time, whenever we are able to go to Delhi, uh, doesn't seem very likely soon. But whenever we are, Manoj ji and myself, uh, as a part of DAB, we will ensure, sir, that. We strongly represent this with the Central uh, Ministry of IT. Ravi Shankar Prasad ji, I believe, is the minister, and we will uh, definitely, sir, discuss with them. Just one last point, sir. With respect to the certificates, you know, we've had a number of questions where the format format is actually fixed, uh, either in banks or by you know probably uh, government departments and all. What we've been doing practically is you know signing off that particular format. And giving reference of a separate certificate, uh, which is as per the guidance note on uh, the certificate. So you know, as part of that, I cover everything there and uh, sign the format also, and which the banks and others have also been accepting. I think it's a fantastic uh, workaround, sir. And what I can also mention is that we must always ensure that we mention the date, that is the engagement letter. I think because Correct. the engagement letter can cover a lot of terms, and uh, members can not appreciate now, but that engagement letter will come to their rescue if something, uh, you know, hanky panky were to happen with that account or with that client. So it's always very advisable to have an engagement letter referred. When I think what exactly. you're doing, sir, as a practice, is uh, is something which everybody can adopt as a good practice. Right. Thank you. That's all, Manu. Over to uh, Akshay Bai. Akshay Bai. Oh yes. Uh, thanks, Aniket. You have really introduced all of us with the auditing standards. I call it uh, the introduction because uh, uh, probably before this, uh, we have hardly had any session on the standards on auditing. And today you listed out all the uh, auditing standards and give us a brief outlook or rather say the subject matter which is there in, in a particular engagement and members you all might have noticed that these auditing standards after the clarity project have been listed out in a manner which is most practical way we use in our daily practices. For example, as is 99 
are only introductory. And before that is the Spanish character on quality control. That gives us how to maintain our office so that or how to maintain and train our staff these kind of standards or practices are listed out there which we usually adopt in our day-to-day -day practice similarly then 200 to 299 these cover the objective part of the audit the engagement and all these uh, practices which we follow in our practices then the third one is relating to the planning and risk assessment that also we do when we discuss with the clients they we know their business we assess the internal controls we assess the internal checks and then we make an audit program and actually perform the audit the third compartment is relating to actually collection of evidence the vouching and other things what we do and analytical procedures and so on and so on which are our normal auditing practices and after that is uh, it, the compartment is related to the joint documentation, joint audit, relying on the work of another auditor, relying on the work of an expert. And after that is our reporting part. So that is all we do in our audits. And if we go through these auditing practices, which are putting put in the form of standard, I think you all will notice that most of these you are following. But what we are not doing is actually we are actually not documenting our exercises, our procedures, which we perform on our day-to-day -day audit. So that becomes very important. So what we can do as, as, as Kanpur CS Society or CIRC, uh, they can uh, organize within these days on, the, on, on, on this format only, two or three standards daily we can discuss and we can list out the important aspects and what is not applicable actually to the very small sizes of the entities. That is also provided. For example, in external confirmations, it is not in all cases you have to take external confirmations. There are certain exceptions and certain carve-outs or certain situations where the external confirmations have to be taken in any case. The two very important topics which have been discussed today, one is relating to the certification of the projected financials. Please go through essay E34000 again and again Aniket has told us the crux of the matter is that we cannot certify because the code of conduct does not allow us to certify that the projections but what we can certify or what we can give in a limited assurance as to the calculations in those projected statements per se the assumptions uh, attached there to with it that is the in, in crux is the uh, what what we can do <clears throat> regarding the format of other certificates i i am really happy aniket probably i have also not gone through so deeply uh, uh, this guidance note on issuing of certificates uh, the uh, Anil also gave us an idea that what to do when the audit formats are prescribed by the clients. I believe we have some somewhere we have to educate the clients also. <clears throat> if the format given by the by the institute is such, it really helps us and helps the user of the certificate to know what is the what is our scope, what are our limitations. And what are the duties and responsibilities of the uh, auditee? So that is very important. The subject matter, of course, the prescribed in the format, uh, we can uh, put it in the certificate in, in the opinion part. But the rest of the part we can take from the guidance note. Now, with this, uh, I must thank Aniket you from the core of my heart. You have really gave us very wonderful uh, uh, presentation to all the members. And uh, my special thanks to Anilji and Manu, of course, the, the way the, in the format you have organized all this, these seminars in the last four or five days. And I, I believe you will arrange many more for all of us in, 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 uh, continuously. And uh, Gyanji and uh, Atulji, who are providing these platforms and uh, so that the most, more and more members join in these kind of programs. And I thank all of you. And uh, over to uh, Manu for further proceedings. Thank you, Akshay Bhai. And uh, well, before thanking everybody, 
Nikhil, uh, just one good news that the FAFD course which we announced, I think, is already full, and yeah, the registration it. registration seem to be complete because I've started reaching uh, receiving uh, uh, queries from members that I'm unable to log in. I'm not finding the link that was supposed to happen only when uh, the registrations were full. Uh, 20 minutes back, I got a message that 50 registrations done. So I do not know, but it's uh, a superb hit and. I hope the sessions also are uh, similarly a hit. And now uh, we also have Aniket with us, the Vice Chairman of CIRC, Siyatul Mehrutra. I'd just like him to say a few words. Thank you, Manu Bhai, for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to have interact with our viewers. First of all, uh, I want to thank Talati Ji, Anil Ji, and our uh, always uh, chairing the session Akshay ji, who always uh, motivate us and uh, manage our uh, uh, studies in a very perfect manner. Uh, and the topics were uh, attestation of uh, projections and unaudited financial implication of UDI and essays. They are all very important for our day-to-day -day practice. A lot of questions, queries are being raised from our members from the remote area regarding the signing of the projected uh, financial statements and uh, about the issue of the UDN for various certificates which they are uh, issuing in their day-to-day -day practice. Uh, sir, thank you Talati ji for your uh, very nice presentation and uh, very in a simple manner. And uh, the external confirmation which we, uh, most of the chartered accountants may not be using uh, right now, but uh, now we are uh, supposed to use uh, uh, all these essays and to the extent possible to perform our duties and responsibility to the maximum extent. And uh, my personal request uh, to all the viewers and all the members is uh, as our uh, Honorable President Atul Gupta Ji is working very hard for the collection of uh, funds uh, for this global crisis, COVID-19. So I personally request on behalf of CIRC to all of you to please contribute to the maximum extent. And uh, as far as Akshay is told, ki, uh, we can uh, take these standards in two, three part essays uh, during this lockdown period. So, sir, uh, we will take care. We, I will discuss with our team and it will be done, sir. And uh, retention of uh, records, as far as is, well, it is also very important because uh, a small, uh, small, things we don't care for that what is maybe the importance of the retention of the record which we are uh, doing our audit about. thank you so much sir for giving me the opportunity stay safe and take care of now uh, over to the president of kcs jan can your voice is not there i think you're on mute okay now unmute Boliye, Hello. <laughs> Haan, boliye, boliye. Thank you. Uh, a lot of uh, things has been said, uh, and uh, congratulations to uh, Niket ji for delivering us such a wonderful uh, deliberations and uh, all with full clarity and uh, we will try to organize more and more uh, seminar with the help of manuji and uh, please forward us on mail format of engagements letters which you have promised thank you and thank you over to manu Bhaiya. okay so now i thank all the participants thank uh to remain for some time. Don't leave the studio. Okay, I just request all the panelists to stay for two minutes. And uh, obviously, I thank uh, the Vice Chairman CRC Atulji for coming. Uh, my okay. dear friend Anil Bhai for uh, being okay. there as a panelist. And of course, Aniket, who had a wonderful session. And last but not the least, I thank all the uh, viewers who were here. Uh, we had, I think, uh, 
somewhere around about 200 viewers attending at most of the times it was above 175 and uh, i have uh, received a lot of messages that people are saying ki 3 o'clock is a bit early we will see it afterwards we will see the recorded version and uh, just to tell you we have a history that uh, if there are 200 people then by the next day the views go over a thousand so thanks to all thanks and uh, see you soon the next session is not yet scheduled but as soon as it is scheduled it will be announced thanks to all. thank you just now just now discuss the next